It being after 5 p.m., pursuant to order, we interrupt debate on the MPI to proceed to valedictory statements for Senator Seward. And I call Senator Seward. Thank you, Mr. President. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Ngunnawal people, and acknowledge elders past, present, and emerging. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the Buja, which I live and work on, Brulu, Perth. Bulu is located in the country of the Wajak Noongar people, who have been the traditional owners of the southwest of Western Australia for at least 45,000 years. Sovereignty of this land was never ceded. This land has always was and it always will be Aboriginal land. First Nations peoples continue to practice their culture and strengthen their communities, despite the policies and interventions of governments over the more than two centuries white people have been here and that we were, Australia was colonised. Their culture is thriving and growing and their fight for justice is gaining momentum, despite the punitive and paternalistic policies of successive governments that have sought to deny First Nations peoples their rights and their proper place at the heart of our nation. Having the longest living history and culture still thriving on this ancient continent is what helps make us uniquely Australian. It has been a great pleasure to work with First Nations peoples and organisations around this country. Thank you to all of the First Nations organisations and groups I've worked with over these 16 years. Thank you for your support, your knowledge and wisdom that you have shared. There is still so much unfinished business, many injustices that need to be put right. We still have some of the, of the worst First Nations health, education, employment and life expectancy outcomes in the world. We have by far the highest rates of over-representation of Aboriginal children in our child protection system. And the numbers of Aboriginal youth within our justice systems are the worst of any developed nation in the world. I am so pleased there will be two strong and determined Aboriginal women as part of our Greens team in this place to drive change. It has been a privilege to represent the people of Western, of Western Australia in the Senate. I have always been driven by achieving better outcomes for people and planet. Just to confirm, this is my formal, last, last fa my formal farewell speech. However, as I'll be here for another week, providing that we are sitting, it won't be my very last word. You can't expect, surely, that I will sit here silently for a week. <laughs> You're spot on. In my first speech, I said, we need to remember that we live in a community, not an economy. That our economy is one means of sustaining that community, an important part, but definitely not only one part. It is one we need to get right. But it is not the be-all and end-all. Ultimately, what we all want is the opportunity to lead meaningful and fulfilling lives. If instead of striving to be richer, we could strive to be more equal, everyone's well-being would improve. And we would have healthier communities based on compassion, honesty, fairness, justice, respect and equality. This statement is as true today as it was 16 years ago. We have seen over the last two decades what happens when we put the interests of the wealthy ahead of those of the broader community. Wealth doesn't trickle down and it doesn't float all those boats. Now more than ever, it is critical that we put the people and the planet ahead of all else. The pandemic has laid bare how important a strong and inclusive community is and how important it is to look out for everyone in our community. COVID showed us that poverty is a political choice. In a country as wealthy and prosperous as Australia, it is shameful and unacceptable that we have so many people living below the poverty line, there are, that so many are homeless and struggle to have enough to eat. Early on in the pandemic crisis, we had a small taste of what it could be like if our economy was truly designed to serve us. Briefly, across the political spectrum, we were all truly in it together and focused on the best community outcomes. For the first time in over two decades, people on income support had enough to get by. Those experiencing homelessness were given shelter 
and communities came together to support each other. After having campaigned in this chamber and across the country for an increase in income support for well over a decade, I was in fact overjoyed when the government suddenly doubled the rate of the job seeker payment during COVID. After decades of community ca campaigning, we finally got to see firsthand the dramatic increase in the quality of life brought about because people who were being marginalised and excluded finally received an adequate living income. We heard firsthand the impact this made on people on income support, and I shared many of these accounts that were entrusted to me in this chamber. The COVID crisis shone a light, shone a light on how broken our social security net really is. Suddenly, a significant number of Australian household holders needed to access income support for the first time in their lives. In doing so, many people discovered how complicated and punitive our social safety net has become. We saw the biggest shift in attitudes in, in decades everywhere across our communities. But it turns out, unfortunately, those attitudes towards the poor and the excluded did not shift very far in this place. For decades, there has been an approach by successive governments, reinforced by our mainstream media, that seeks to undermine the character of those who are struggling to get by and seeks to blame them for the desperate circumstances they find themselves in. Our income support system seems designed to grind people down, to rob their lives of hope and meaning, rather than assisting them to find their, life, their purpose in their life, to make a contribution to society and to have a good life. We are again seeing the government pursuing people for overpayment errors, many of them most likely by Centrelink. At the same time, our Treasurer and Prime Minister refuse to do anything to recover the hundreds of millions of dollars in JobKeeper subsidies made to billionaires and big corporations. Have we learnt nothing from robo-debt? Through this crisis, the government has clearly shown that poverty is a political choice that we quite deliberately continue to choose to make. We have seen how they can provide our citizens who are out of work with a living wage and how effectively this stimulates local economies and improves outcomes for our community. Instead, they have chosen to entrench economic inequality by only increasing the job seeker payment by a mere $3 a day, keeping the payment below the poverty line. Remember, this includes single parents, people with a disability who can't get DSP, older workers being discriminated against and, and ageing into retirement in poverty. We could and should imagine a country where everyone has the opportunity to live their best life, to find and develop their talents, to follow their passions and build meaningful and purpose, meaningful and purpose in their lives to be given the opportunity to make a contribution to our community and to be recognised for it. Our role in this place should be to make these dreams possible, not to crush them. We are given a unique opportunity here to help create a better country. Now is the time for an unconditional livable income so that nobody has to live in poverty in this country. Now I would like to turn to the biggest crisis we all face, the one that threatens not just our health and well-being, but the health and resilience and ongoing viability of all life on this planet. It is with a heavy heart and an immense sense of disappointment and frustration that I stand here and acknowledge that after 16 years in this place, that we as a parliament representing the Australian community have failed to achieve anything meaningful and constructive for them in the face of this I can say this existential threat of climate change. I could say it when I practiced it. We had legislation and it was starting to work and it was torn up. Shame. We are in a climate crisis. It is code red. The first duty of a government should be to keep people safe. We do have a duty of care to all our children and our future generations. In the last few years, we have seen the start of a dreadful acceleration of the rate of catastrophic climate extreme weather events across Australia and around the world. 
We have faced fires on a scale and ferocity never seen before, knowing at the same time that the conditions will only get worse. Droughts, cyclones and floods continue to become more frequent and more severe. As we continue to cause more widespread damage, the resilience of our ecosystems, their ability to recover and to continue to sustain life is eroded. In turn, their degradation and loss contributes more greenhouse gases. It's a vicious cycle. The climate crisis is, dam is damaging our vital ecosystems. All the life we share this planet with our health, our water, our ability to grow food and the air we breathe. Climate change now threatens all species, and if we fail to act quickly and comprehensively, many more species will be lost to extinction within our lifetimes. All the while, donations from fossil fuel industries continue to influence political decision-making. The latest IPCC report adds more detail to the science and more certainty to the predictions of the temperature rises and habitat loss. But fundamentally, we already knew and have known for a long time that we have to act with a sense of extreme urgency. This is a collective shame on this place, in my opinion. History will judge us very harshly because the evidence is there in black and white in the Hansard that we knew about this monumental threat to our community and our planet. When the lives and livelihoods of Australians were threatened by the coronavirus, governments listened to the science and took action. It is beyond time to treat the climate crisis as the national emergency that it is and take urgent action. We are running out the clock on this crisis. We have very little time left to, pre to prevent catastrophic climate change. We already know that, we, that the last two decades of inaction have cost us and our children very dearly. And increasingly, there is a risk that things will get away from us and our efforts will be too little, too late. I would like to reflect on some of the important and of un unrec unrecognised work that we have achieved in this place. Unfortunately, parliamentarians agreeing and working together is not all that newsworthy. And I think perhaps we should all, including the media, look at what we click on and report that reinforces conflict and controversy and failing to seek out and share stories of good processes delivering positive and good outcomes. One of the ways that we can achieve outcomes is through the committee process. And I think it comes as no surprise to anyone in this chamber that I'm a big supporter of the committee process. I do acknowledge that not all the inquiries we undertake through the committee process has us singing kumbaya and agreeing, but they are very, there have been some very good outcomes from committees and they drive change. It has been my privilege to be the chair of the Senate Community Affairs Reference Committee for a number of years. Working together in committees and with community, we've been able to shine a light on many, many issues, including past adoption practices, the experiences of former child migrants and forgotten Australians, hearing health, suicide prevention, violence and abuse, uh, violence and, abuse and neglect of disabled people, indefinite detention of people with cognitive and psychiatric impairment in Australia, the aged care workforce, out-of-home care, grandparent carers, income inequality, Lyme diseases and, of course, robo-debt and so many more. One inquiry that stands out for me is the 2012 inquiry into forced adoptions. I will ne never forget the trust and confidence people in the community had in the committee to share their very personal and often deeply, deeply, deeply traumatic experiences. Because of their courage, we, have ex we exposed this dark chapter of our history and made immeasurable changes to the lives of those in our community who were so badly affected by this inhumane treatment. That is where this place shines. I remember that day so clearly when we delivered the report, people spoke and we all in this chamber stood up and clapped the mothers and the children and those affected by forced adoptions who were all in the gallery. We clapped them and it was a day that I think we can all be proud of. During my time here, I've, supported, I've been supported by so many parliamentary staff 
And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the procedures office, the tables office, the library and Hansard, con car drivers and all the wonderful people that keep this place running. And where would we be without our fix from Aussies? Thanks to the amazing and fantastic chamber assistants who keep assistants who keep us all on track. Stephen, Diane, Wally, Rosemary, Adrian and Fiona. I would like to thank all the committee staff for their dedication and support during the many Senate inquiries I have chaired, referred and participated in. In particular, I would like to thank the Community Affairs Committee Secretariat for their support and for their always ensuring that we can hear the experiences and voices of the community in this place. It is one of the important things that I, that I hope continues is that we continue to ensure that we hear the voices of the community in this place. My work would have been greatly diminished if it had not been for the support and generosity of our deeply valued stakeholders and community and not-for-profit sectors. I would not have been able to manage my portfolio responsibilities and campaigns without your expertise and the time you have spent over many, many years um, investing in various issues, uh, lob campaigning, um, advocating for change in this place. I thank you for your invaluable help to help us raise pressure and bring the issues out here in this chamber. I think together we have made some changes to some key issues. I would also like to thank all the staff they have worked with in my office, the WHIPS office and the WHIPS clerks and the broader green team, the Greens teams over the last 16 years. I have received so much support from all of you over many years and I could not have done the work that I have done without your dedication, expertise and patience. I would like to make a special shout out to all my office staff over the years. It's a long list. Thanks to Rebecca, Bridget, Nicola, Scott, Fluffy, Tim, Chris, Dee, Donna, Tanil, Joe, Nadine, Georgia, Andrew, Jess, Elise, uh, Eloise, Fernando, Claire, Harriet, Ryan, Tarek, Oggy, Elliot, Giz, Dave, Alan, and my current amazing team. Rose, Lucy, Jana, Grace and Alison. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. We have truly operated a team at all times and I will miss you so much. I will note that a lot of those staff are now currently working for other Green senators in the Australian Greens and in the Leader's Office and many have gone on to very other very exciting work. As I said in my first speech, I stand here the fourth in a line of strong green women from the West. I pay tribute to Joe Valentine, Christabel Chamaret and Dee Margetts and thank them for the support they have given me over the years. I know that our next WA Senator, Dorinda Cox, is also a force from the West and she is very strongly to be reckoned with. Thank you to all our volunteers at Greens WA. Your commitment to our values and passion for making our community better means that I have been lucky enough to be able to represent you and our beautiful state for the last 16 years. When I started out here, we were a much smaller team. In fact, there were just four of us. And I want to pay tribute to Bob Brown and Christine Milne, who both guided and mentored me during the beginnings of my political career. It did take me a long time to realise I was actually a politician. I would also like to thank Richard and Adam for their support and guidance and commitment to our Greens movement, and I thank all my party room colleagues. It's such a shame you can't be here. I'm sending my love to you all and thank you very much. I have enjoyed working with all of you. It's been a great honour. I would also like to thank, from, again from the bottom of my heart, all the people who have sent me such lovely messages over the last couple of, of days. It's very much appreciated. Senator Keneally, I'm using your trick of the tongue in your top of your mouth. Finally, important.
importantly, I would like to thank my family. We all in this place have the same family issues as everybody else. We have our ups and downs. We have family crises, children being sick or simply children, young people being teenagers, supporting our parents as they age, coping with the loss of loved ones. So often our families have to cope with these issues without us because we are in Canberra, on the road or in a meeting. We all have missed, I'm sure, so many family occasions. My son will really hate me saying this, but I missed his school ball and seeing him in his formal suit. That can never happen again, and so many people in here have had the same. My family's love and support and understanding have seen me through many challenges and I'm so lucky to have you by my side during this journey. It's been up and down and bumpy sometimes, but overall, I think that we have managed to make some change. Thank you all to my family for being there and, actually, and being on my side. I thank everybody in this place for also the support that you have shown um, and given to me. Thank you. I will now call for contributions to the list I have, and I'll commence with Senator Birmingham. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Mr. President. And uh, Mr. President, the, the departure of any of our colleagues from the Senate chamber is often an occasion for a little bit of reflection and in the departure of Senator Seward, of Rachel uh, as a senator from Western Australia. Uh, I look at the fact that Rachel is now uh, the only Green senator to have served in the Senate longer than I have served as a senator, and making such an incredible contribution uh, with such conviction over such a prolonged period of time. And Rachel, I want to start by just expressing how much you will be missed, I think, from right across the chamber uh, by colleagues who respect you from right across the chamber. As we saw in the remarks you made just then, and we've seen right throughout your career, you're a person and have been a senator uh, of passion, and of compassion, uh, that you are someone with strong convictions, but also just such a thoroughly decent person in the way in which you engage and conduct yourself in a principled and a thoughtful manner at all times. 16 years of service in the Senate uh, is an incredible accomplishment uh, in anyone's terms. It's a long way uh, from work uh, as an agricultural scientist, uh, digging through the fields and studying the soil and the salinity in Jerramunga. It's a long way from uh, the 14 years you spent as uh, the coordinator of the WA Conservation Council. But in the 16 years, you've made a real imprint, not just on the institution of the Senate, but I think probably far more importantly on the lives of many people. And you touched on that in your remarks through the committee work and the advocacy work that you've undertaken. Uh, there must be so many thousands of Australians who are grateful uh, for the engagements they've had with Rachel Seward and for the advocacy they've had from Rachel Seward and for the passion and thoughtfulness that you've brought to that. You mentioned your recollections of the work on the inquiry and forced adoption as one of the many different areas that you made a mark uh, as uh, a senator and particularly as chair and participant in the Community Affairs Committee. Um, and indeed, I remember that day too. And I remember the respect that was had across the participants in that inquiry uh, for the senators who had engaged in that inquiry and between the senators for one another and how strongly that extended uh, from senators, coalition senators, Labor senators, to you and to the work that you had done uh, as a champion and advocate in that area of such enormous sensitivity of such deep emotion for so many people uh, and the care that you had shown throughout. Of course, it's not to say that, uh, that you don't know how to make a point either. Uh, we've certainly all had to turn the volume down occasionally from the odd Rachel Seward contribution in the chamber. Um, but 
sometimes I think it's safe to say some senators come into the chamber or go into committees or elsewhere and raise their voices for perhaps a little bit of grandstanding uh, to get themselves noticed, to make sure that people turn and see what they're talking about. Whereas I think we all know that when you decided to raise your voice and make sure we all turned around and listened and thought, God, what's Rachel um, you know, so worked up about now? It was because you really cared. It was because it was something that really mattered to you, not just because you were going after a headline uh, or some attention at the time. Uh, and that's a credit and a testament to the type of person that you are. Uh, in your work across the committees, in your work as the Greens whip, in all of those different areas, it has been a demonstration of somebody truly committed to the service of the people of Western Australia, to the service of your supporters and those who share your convictions and your ideologies. And although we may have our points of difference and you have absolutely championed your values, your opinions and those who have elected you relentlessly. And for that, you've got all of our respect. We want to thank uh, on behalf of the government, your family, uh, for the sacrifices they've made to lend you to the service uh, of the nation in the Senate. Uh, they should be proud too of what you've achieved. And so, Rachel, I'm sorry that I'm not there today in person to wish you well, um, but we do wish you well. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, for so many working with you. I know that's a sentiment that has been echoed since your announcement and to me and by government senators, by Labor senators and others that you'll be missed. Uh, the Greens certainly need to think carefully in terms of your replacement as whip and making sure uh, that, uh, that uh, somebody brings the same sense of how to get things done while standing up for uh, your values at the same time and getting that balance right as you've done. So good luck, all the best, and, uh, and I'm sure that we will keep hearing those, uh, those passionate views of yours from outside of the Senate chamber uh, as somebody of, uh, of your beliefs will no doubt continue to do so. Thank you. Senator Keneally. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise on behalf of the opposition to acknowledge the valedictory remarks of Senator Rachel Seabert and to reflect on her contribution to the Senate. One of the longest serving current senators, first elected from Western Australia in 2004 and re elected at two further times in 2010 and 2016, taking her seat on 1 July 2005, at the same time as our current Senate colleague, Senator Polly and Senator Stirl. Her tenure is extended beyond 16 years. At her heart, an environmentalist. With a background in agriculture and conservation, as a senator, she's made a particular impact in the area of social policy, where she's been a relentless advocate for some of Australia's most marginalised citizens, as well as the management of this chamber as the Australian Greens whip. Now, when Senator Seward arrived in the Senate, it wasn't the first time a Green senator from Western Australia had occupied the benches in this place. And as she noted in her first speech, and here in her almost last speech, and I quote, as the fourth in line of, of a determined Green women from the West to take on the Senate and progress the Green vision. Continuing this proud legacy of women from that state representing her party, Senator Seward paid particular tribute to the support she'd received from Dee Margetts who was present to witness her to begin the next chapter. It says something about the determination of Senator Seward that she's now spent more days as a senator than her three prede predecessors combined, today reaching 5,900 days of service. She joined the Senate, though, at one of the darkest times in its history, with the Howard government having secured a majority. Perhaps those on the other side don't think it was a dark time, but for those like Senator Seward and others, it was a frustration about the egregious exercise of power that included the abolition of half of the Senate's legislative and general purpose standing committees and the passage of the infamous work choices legislation and the sale of the remaining publicly owned component of Telstra among the policy missteps of the time. And it was a tough time for all non-government parties. Senator Seward joined three Greens colleagues, Senators Brown, Nettle and Milne, and immediately took up duties as the Australian Greens whip in the Senate. And she has maintained her grip on the whip's role for the entirety of her 16 years as senator, a length of time I'm not sure we would wish to commit anyone to the task of whipping even a senator from the Greens. 
In all seriousness, we recognise the role of whips as a critical one in the management of the chamber. The Senate would not function effectively without the cooperation and the coordination between the senators who serve as whips, something I thank Senator Seward for her part in making happen. I will note the demands of her position have undoubtedly increased for her as the size of her party room has increased, but I'm pretty sure she's not complaining about that. Now, Senator Rachel Seward really did take on the Senate, and no, so, no more so is this the case than in the area of social policy and social justice, where Senator Seward has been a leader in advocating for those who are often discriminated against or on the margins of society. As she said in her first speech, she held a vision of community. And I note she just now quoted one part of that speech. I'd like to quote another. She says, a community extends beyond the borders of our neighborhood, suburb, or state, a community in which people care about each other and the future of our planet and act carefully and responsibly to ensure its ongoing success, a community that embraces diversity and understands that people living creative, fulfilling lives are more innovative and productive and will make a greater contribution to society. She identified the negative impact of government policies that were designed to undermine the ability of nonprofit organizations, such as community advocates, to advocate and lobby. She decried cuts to government services that outsourced welfare and expected volunteers to pick up the slack. She lamented attacks on the rights of workers, especially the least advantaged in our society, young people, women, those in low-paid work, casuals, and temporary workers. She promoted the work of indigenous leaders and was disappointed in the lack of support for First Nations communities to build active cultures that foster safe and healthy family environments. It's a source of ongoing frustration and disappointment for all of us on this side of the chamber that many of these issues of social justice remain unresolved and that some of these attacks are even being re-prosecuted today. Senator Seward has been most vocal in her advocacy for people on income support, especially with regard to the rate of New Start and its successor payment job seeker. She's similarly drawn the attention of the Senate time and again to the impact of social security policies on the everyday lives of many Australians, including in the areas of housing and homelessness and the cashless debit card. As chair of the Senate Community Affairs References Committee since 2009, another substantial tenure, she's been involved in significant inquiries, such as into past adoption practices, former child migrants, hearing health, and suicide prevention. And as we've heard in the Senate this week, she's joined with Labor senators in bringing to light the shame of robo-debt and continue to highlight the detrimental effect of this policy on so many Australians. Senator Seward similarly brought the needs of Australians with a disability to the Parliament, especially through the Parliamentary Committees on the National Disability Insurance Scheme. And just as she did in her first speech in this place, she's continued, continued to be a consistent voice in support of First Nations people and relentlessly called for reconciliation and for governments to address the causes of this disadvantage and empower them to improve their living conditions. The Senate has benefited from Senator Seward's tenacity and perseverance in always highlighting the impact of government policy on those in our community who are often battling to get a hearing, to get a fair go, and she's always been about proposing alternative pathways. Senator Seward, you said tonight that you feel that you've made some change. I say you've made a significant change, and you have given voice to the voiceless and you've given hope to many, and you have made lasting change in this place. I will say, on a personal note, when I first came to know Senator Seward, I thought of her as a firecracker, a burst of energy. She seems to have endless energy. And I will say, as someone who, along with Senator Seward, does frequent the gym, often very early in the morning, I won't reveal the names of the few other senators who we sometimes see there. But she does have endless energy. From 6.15 a.m. onward, Senator Seward never rests in order to bring a fair go to her fellow Australians. 
There has never been any doubt on whose side, whose side Senator Seward is on. Now, Senator Seward has chosen the timing of her departure from this place. She does so having made a substantial contribution as an advocate for some of Australia's most vulnerable people. I hope she leaves satisfied with what she's been able to accomplish and with energy and passion continue to advance the causes that she believes in for a fair and more just society. On behalf of the opposition, although I know many of my colleagues will wish to speak tonight as well, I acknowledge Senator Rachel Seward's service in the Senate and wish her well for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Senator McKenzie. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And I rise on behalf of the Nationals uh, with great pleasure to farewell Senator Seward. And not because she's a Green, but because she has served our nation and her community in Western Australia for 16 years in this place, and that's no easy task. And you have made an impressive contribution. You're well respected by all in this place, Senator Seward, uh, for your professionalism and the manner in the way you conduct your politics uh, and the consistency that you've done that and the way you've represented your values and your views and your community uh, across that time. It should come of no surprise that the National Party and the Greens are rarely in agreement on anything. Um, but I would like to commend Senator Seward uh, for having a particular focus and a um, lived experience of rural and regional Australia that she's brought to this place uh, and to all the conversations that she's had in and outside of this chamber. And that passion shines through. So not just a passion for the regions, uh, for ensuring that agriculture should be rightly recognised, uh, but also for getting yoga and strength training into the parliament uh, gym, I recall, many, many years ago. We got that done as well. Um, she also recognises, unlike, uh, unfortunately, some of her colleagues, obviously not another regional Australian there, uh, <laughs> Senator Hanson Young, but on, on that side of the chamber, regional Australia does deserve equitable access to health and to education, and you've been a champion of those uh, issues as well, because you understand that the regions are the engine room for the uh, economy. In fact, Senator Seward has had a long service of representing the regions in the Senate. The committee is a long one, but two that I've served alongside of you in uh, um, the Senate Standing Committee on Community Affairs and uh, Rural Regional Affairs and Transport. On the 11th of August in 2005, Senator Seward delivered her first speech, and with a Bachelor of Science in Ag and a background as a research office with, officer with the State Department of Agriculture, uh, she said, I am determined to ensure our rural communities can continue to survive and, in fact, thrive. And uh, that is uh, a message that uh, the National Party obviously shares and wants to assist with. People from right across Australia have benefited from your efforts, Senator Seward, not just those in WA, and we're grateful. Uh, there were occasions when Senator Seward backed our farmers, and the backpack attacks was not the first time. Uh, that the Nats and the Greens joined forces uh, to support rural and regional Australia. On the 13th of November in 2013, Senator Seward uh, said, we get to Grain Corp. This is one area where I agree with the Nationals. I'm very concerned about the takeover by ADM of Grain Corp, and I agree with the Nationals. I can't say it enough, but you, you said it first. Uh, it does present problems for our farmers, we should restart the inquiry into this takeover. We're concerned that it will be anti-competitive, that it will have a negative impact on our farmers, and we urge the Nationals to continue their opposition to this takeover. Well, guess what? The Nationals did. And Treasurer at the time, Joe Hockey, uh, made the right decision in blocking that takeover bid. So we thank you for the strong arm over there of the Greens on behalf of Regional Australia, Senator Seward. We're going to miss you, I think. We're going to miss you. Um, I think that was a great example of uh, party politics not getting in the way of doing the right thing. And as I said, I've served with Senator Seward on, on RAP, but also on community affairs. And I, I came into that role when we we're in opposition uh, with two other powerhouses, uh, Senator Susie Boyce and Senator, uh, former Senator Claire Moore. Now, though, that dynamic trio taught me a lot about this place, 
Um, they focused on being collaborative, on driving consensus when possible, without compromising your views and values. And uh, I'm going to get emotional now. Um, it was uh, a, a great pleasure as a new senator, um, someone who hadn't been in politics uh, as a staff or anything, to come and learn from the three of you. And I do think, as you said, part of our work should be about finding common space, because that's where most of Australia, who sent us all here, is. And Rachel, the way you've approached your work um, has sought to always find that where you could. And I think uh, all of us could do better to find more of that space. I think over the decade I've been here, that's something uh, that I hope we're not losing. Um, but you did, and the Senate provides us all with that unique opportunity. Um, that forced adoptions inquiry uh, was incredibly powerful and showed me what you can do from the Senate. You don't have to be in government, you don't have to be a minister, you just have to find consensus. Uh, like minded individuals go with the evidence. And uh, what we're all able to achieve out of that, I think, on behalf of those women uh, and their children, I think was uh, quite incredible. It will stay with me my entire life um, as something very, very powerful. Um, your pragmatic, grounded approach that you brought to RAT, uh, as an ag scientist, I think I, I can never uh, thank you enough for that. Wherever life after the Senate takes you, um, Senator, I know that uh, you'll embrace it broadly, robustly, with both hands. Uh, you'll squeeze every bit of uh, joy out of that. Um, I wish you all the very best on behalf of my party, but also on behalf personally um, and on behalf of Regional Australia. Thank you very much for your service. Go well. Thank you, Senator McKenzie. I think we're going to Senator Waters. Senator Waters. Thanks very much, Deputy President. And uh, I rise to speak in awe of Senator Rachel Seward. And it's so sad that we can't all be there with you in person. Um, each of our senators will be making their own contribution. So I hope you've got enough tissues there, Rach. Um, and Adam, of course, sends his love. I'm going to be sharing some words. Um, from him and a few other of your former colleagues in this contribution. But after 16 years of contribution to our polity, to our parliament, to society, um, we are going to miss you so very, very much. And there are such big shoes to fill, even though you have really tiny feet and very pointy shoes. <laughs> Um, this place isn't going to be the same without you, Rach, and you are held in the absolute highest regard uh, by not only all of our party room and our party members, but by everyone in this chamber, as you've just heard and as you will hear um, for hopefully a long while yet tonight. Uh, your, your work ethic is just phenomenal. Your integrity is unquestionable. Your honesty, the respect with which, with which you treat others um, your dedication, your tenacity, your relentlessness is legendary. And um, the way you do politics, Rach, is a lesson to how we should all do politics, in my opinion. Um, we are going to miss you so desperately. You can be so proud of what you've achieved after a lifetime of service, not just in this role, but in your previous careers as well. Um, your service to the planet, service to its people, and you have now well and truly earned the right to have some of your time and some of your life back. Uh, your family needs you now and you need that time also. And we know that you have a very exciting chapter coming up. Um, you're so well loved that we are going to share around um, some of the contributions and some of your former colleagues have asked that I uh, share some words from them to you. Um, there's, there's too many of them. So Senator McKim will be sharing um, some messages from Christine and Bob, um, and I've got messages from Adam and Richard and Scotty. So I'll start off with, um, with Greens leader Adam Bant, who of course would be here, but he's in lockdown in Melbourne. Um, says, For 16 years, Rachel has been a force of nature in the Senate, and she has made an immeasurable contribution to the community, to the Greens movement, and to Australian democracy. 
Rachel is recognised across the political spectrum as being one of the most hardworking and dedicated senators this place has seen. She is a tireless campaigner, and no matter what is thrown in her way, she will keep fighting for justice for people and the planet. Her time in Parliament has been shaped by her belief that when the people in Parliament work for their community, we can do powerful things together. Rachel has been instrumental in fighting for a fairer income support system and has humanised the experiences of people on income support, ensuring their voices are heard. She has led the campaign to increase New Start and Job Seeker in the Parliament. It goes on. Rachel has been the leading voice in Parliament fighting the punitive measures successive governments have imposed on some of the most vulnerable in our community, including cuts to single parenting payments, um, the Northern Territory intervention, income management and the cashless debit card, work for the doll, the community development program and the woefully low rates of income support. Rachel has campaigned alongside the community for justice for the victims of the illegal robo-debt scheme and demanded the ministers responsible be held to account. Rachel chaired and referred the robo-debt debacle to the Senate inquiry in 2017 and again in 2019. He continues, she has been the chair of the Senate Community Affairs References Committee for 12 years, where she has chaired and referred issues such as past adoption practices, thank you for that, former child migrants, hearing health, suicide prevention, the violent abuse and neglect of disabled people, definite detention of people with cognitive and psychiatric impairment in Australia, the aged care sector workforce, out of home care, grandparent carers, income inequality and robo debt. She was a driving force behind the forced adoptions inquiry and was instrumental in securing a national apology for mothers and their children. They should be proud of indeed. Um, Adam continues, Rachel was one of the first politicians to campaign for a royal commission into the violent abuse and neglect of disabled people, pursuing a royal commission since 2015, when it was a key recommendation of the Senate inquiry. In 2012, she made history by introducing a private member's bill into the Senate to help address petrol sniffing in the Northern Territory, which passed the parliament and became law. Rachel played a key role in the community campaign, which stopped a major Woodside gas hub at James Price Point in North uh, WA. And he says, I'm sure her persistent presence at estimates will be missed by many, but perhaps not by um, the public servants that you have grilled over the years, Rach. Um, I'll continue on with Adam's um, comments here. Rachel has been the only Greens whip and the Greens spokesperson on family and community services, First Nations issues, ageing, mental health, health, healthy oceans, agriculture and industrial relations. Before being elected to the Senate in 2005, as the fourth in a long line of strong green women senators from the West, Rachel, Se uh, Rachel Seward spent 16 years as the coordinator of the Conservation Council of WA and played a role in a number of national and state forums tackling pressing environmental and social justice issues, including the World Heritage Listing of Shark Bay. He finishes, it goes without saying that Rachel's departure is a huge loss to the Senate and the Australian community. Now, another former leader of our wonderful party, dear Richard Di Natale, also wants to share this with you, Rach. Um, Richard says, Rachel, a huge thank you for fighting so hard for so long for people who don't have a voice. You will be remembered for your work to help people out of work live with some dignity, for your work with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and for campaigns like James Price Point. I'll remember you as a friend. Good luck on the other side. I can highly recommend it. <laughs> He's doing well, as you know. Um, and lastly, from the senator on to the senatrix, a message from Scotty, former Senator Scott Ludlam. He says, this place has never known anyone as fierce, tenacious, smart and grounded as Senator Rachel Seward. To say her voice will be missed in here would be an understatement because her voice has been raised for so many people sidelined and shut out of this place. From day one, 16 years until today, it's been rage against the machine. Thank you for everything, he says. Um, Rach, your work will live on. Um, your 16 years in this chamber will live on for many years in the successes that you have driven and achieved. Um, and I've already detailed through the words of, of our leaders and former leaders the impact that you've had in so many policy areas. Um, but I want to really briefly reflect on how much I've valued you as a friend and a confidant in this place. 
Um, and I want to um, remember to you some of the weird and wonderful experiences that we've shared in this bizarre um, and privileged role that we've that we've had um, from the very early days campaigning against the Traveston Dam before I was um, before I had the honour of being a senator for Queensland. Um, campaigning against that dam that was proposed for the Mary River, which we successfully stopped, Rach, in, in part, no doubt, because of you um, and those uh, beautiful places and wonderful farmers that we spoke with in Gympie. The tour throughout WA that we did, opposing gas fracking, um, which sadly we will continue to have to fight, um, but flying in that tiny, tiny little plane um, out of Broome over the Canning Basin. Um, where you, me, and Scott had all inadvertently worn exactly the same thing and uh, looked somewhat like Mormons on the day, um, to the shared committee trips that we did um, on the Northern Australia Committee um, out the back of Burke and then some, um, to our trips to Bundaberg and Harvey Bay opposing the cashless debit card, um, to that beautiful, joyful day of your wedding that I was so blessed. Um, to share in the joy of with you, as, as many of our colleagues did as well, uh, to standing with you at a press conference in Perth to support your re-election um, when I was actually secretly pregnant and for the first time was doing a press conference without coffee um, and welcomed everyone to Cairns, uh, which you kindly corrected me that no, we're in fact in Perth, <laughs> um, to all of the wonderful chats that we've had um, in the chamber and on our walks home or over dinner at coffee about terrible sci-fi, um, about, about food, about your family, about your skiing and your paddleboarding prowess, about Fluff's latest surfboard lighting design and, and shark deterrent um, amazing paraphernalia, um, to your aspiration to ensure the protection of biodiversity, including the spiral shitfish, which I believe it is um, incumbent upon us to uh, have entered into the Hansard Annals for history to recall. For all of those times and more, Rach, um, we will miss you so very, very dearly. I, I actually can't imagine the place without you. And of course, we'll do our best without you. And um, the wonderful Dorinda Cox will soon be a senator for WA in your stead. And fantastic Senator Nick McKim will, will soon be our whip. Um, but there's no one like you, Rach, and um, our team will miss you so desperately much. And we wish you all the very best. And thank you so very much for everything that you've done for the wonderful party that you represent and for the values that we all share. Esther Black and we'll miss you very much. Thank you, Senator Waters. I think we're going to Senator Lambie. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy President. Um, gee, Rach, well, they're all going on about how, how hard you work. I just don't think they've called it right. Mate, let's be honest, you're like a bloody Trojan horse. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, not even I can keep up with you. I'll be honest with you. I tell you, I have. I. It is going to. You are going to leave a massive big gap up there because people knowing social services like you do right across the board uh, is absolutely amazing. You've actually either got to live through it or you've got to th sit through a lot of committees and listen to a lot of people, uh, and that is really hard to find. Uh, people up there in that circle, uh, and I don't mean to go at other people. I'm not doing that over um, a valedictory speech. But bottom line is, uh, life experience is missing, and Rachel seems to have a lot of it. Uh, whether that's because she's done a homework, because of a background, uh, whatever. But you will be really, really sadly missed because trying to get those voices up there um, for those millions of Australians, and there are millions of vulnerable Australians out there. So I know you know that. There's some in there that don't. Uh, there is a lot of them, and it's going to get worse. And I think your voice. Is going to be really, really deeply missed. Uh, look, I'm not going to take up much time. Um, you know, I'm in awe of you too. It's been fabulous to be able to have the opportunity to sit down um, and have you next to me um, since I've been up there. I have to say, I, I do blame Christine Milne for that though, just so I don't want to blame myself or you because you see, I used to lean on her when she was there and I asked her when she left, could she put somebody in there that knows procedure? And unfortunately, you got that seat, right? So blame Christine, that's my first point of call. My second one is, and I do ask before I, uh, before I let you go, is that uh, whoever you're going to put in that seat, can you please make sure that they need procedure? Otherwise, if you're expecting me to teach some procedure, I'm sure everything's going to get really, really ugly in there really quickly. 
So once again, look, I've, I've worked on you with committees. You have been fabulous. Um, you take the politics out of politics, girlfriend. You are really going to be sadly missed, and so is your knowledge. So thank you for all the help that you've given me over the years. But um, and my door's always open. You've got me on speed dial. You know that. If you need anything, you call me. But thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Senator Lambie. Senator Rustin. Um, thank you very much, Madam Deputy President. Well, 16 years as a senator travelling backwards and forwards from Western Australia, Rachel, is a pretty phenomenal task. I don't think those of us that live on this side of the country actually recognise the additional toll uh, that, that that travel takes on you. So um, to have done it for 16 years in, uh, in representing your state, I think is an absolute, um, you, know, you should be absolutely commended for it. And I take your hat off. I mean, I get really tired flying all the way back to South Australia, so I can't imagine what it's like when you fly back to Western Australia. But um, I mean, I know you've had a very broad range of things that you've been interested in this place. But in my time, particularly, uh, first of all, in rural and regional affairs, but more recently as the Minister for Social Services, to see your extraordinary passion in areas of health and aged care, um, caring about Indigenous Australians. Uh, and, and I suppose particularly your, just your extraordinary compassion for more vulnerable Australians, Australians that perhaps need a little bit more help than other Australians. And you, know, you have always been the person that has stood up for those people that maybe haven't been able to have a voice of their own, and you've been their voice. And um, you know, I think it is, you know, it's, it's an extraordinary thing for you to be able to take away from this place the things that you have been able to do for Australians that haven't been able to do it for themselves. And so, um, I don't think any of us could possibly um, underestimate um, how many Australians have benefited from your voice. Um, we don't always agree, but I have to say I, I think many Australians would probably be surprised how many times we do agree. Um, and the working relationship that I've had with you over the time, particularly in these last two years, has, has been absolutely phenomenal. And I just wanted to actually mention one area of work that we have done together. Um, and I'm really pleased that the culmination of much of your effort will be realised um, before you go, but we will still continue afterwards, and that's been the National Redress Scheme. Um, you know, your constant voice of, of wisdom, um, your understanding of, of the issue has informed the development of a scheme, which we all admit wasn't a perfect in the first place. But every day that we've been able to work together to improve that scheme, and I think now we're introducing legislation tomorrow. Um, that it will start the first tranche of reforms on the scheme. Um, very importantly, the advance payments for people who are, are, are elderly or, or um, likely, sadly, to die sooner than, uh, than uh, the scheme may be able to respond to them, that we were actually able to give them. Because we know that the $10,000 is really not the important bit. The important bit is that by doing that we're saying, we're listening to you, we believe you. So I'm, I'm really pleased that we've been able to do that. But the one thing I'd say that, agree or disagree, nobody could ever question your motivation. Your motivation has always been pure. Um, I'm not sure all of us in this place can perhaps be uh, to claim to have the kind of, of, uh, of purity of motivation that you do. The other thing I think that is probably one of the hallmarks of your time here is you are always across your brief. Your understanding of the technical detail terrified me when I first became the Minister for Social Services. I'd say, I don't care who I get a question from, just not one from Rachel, because Rachel is more likely to understand way more about my portfolio uh, than I do. And I have to say, in the first few months of my job, my office used to say, watch Rachel. She's the canary in the coal mine. If Rachel's chasing something, there's sure to be something on the other end of it. Um, and you actually have taught me an awful lot about where to where to chase something to make sure that we get to the salient issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, the other thing, and I think Senator Birmingham raised it, you're not somebody for a media grab. You're not somebody for a gotcha moment. You go into everything you do, whether it be a committee, whether it be in this chamber, whether it be in estimates, you're actually prosecuting the issue. You never play the player. You always play the ball. And I think that is an absolute commendable um, attribute. But as I said, you've always sought to represent and project the voices of your constituents and never your own. And I think the ability for you to have done that and your constant commitment to doing that, as I said earlier on, has meant that so many Australians have had a voice that they otherwise wouldn't have had. I mean, you've been tireless, you've been dedicated. Um, your, your advocacy on behalf of the most uh, vulnerable <coughs> is something that I don't know that we'll ever see in this place um, again 
although hopefully we do, um, and also the respectful way in which you engage with everybody in this chamber, whether it be those that you disagree with, those that you agree with, the respect that you show to the attendants and everybody else that you come into contact with this, in this building is an absolute testament to your character, your personality. Uh, and I think everybody here has got to miss that and, and also your uh, cheeky way of, of dealing with things. But you've made a huge contribution. You can leave this place knowing that you have done a lot. Um, I think if all of us could leave this place having achieved as much as you have, then I think we would all have every reason to hold our heads up high and be extremely proud. But Rachel, look, I wish you all the best. I hope that paddleboard is all shined up and ready to go when you get back to Western Australia. But I'm also <laughs> But I'm also equally sure this is not the last that we've heard of Rachel Seawitt. I'm sure we'll see your head popping up frequently advocating on behalf of the people that you believe need a voice. So go with our blessings. Thank you so much for the friendship you've shown me. Um, it has been an absolute honour to work with you and good luck. Thank you, Senator Rustin. Senator O'Neill. Thank you very much. And I have to wonder how Senator Seawitt is sitting, sitting there and feeling at the moment. It's just sort of after all the years of slings and arrows that you know sort of are a part of this place, to finally hear that people think you're a pretty good person, Rachel. It's kind of a, it must be a, a, a profoundly interesting moment to be sitting here experiencing that. I, I just want to reflect briefly on your contribution. You know, to hear your voice um, and the particular tenor of your of your review of your 16 years here, you know, a voice thick with emotion because you care about what you do, which has been reflected by everybody who's made a contribution so far. And to have been serving in this place about which people have become sadly increasingly cynical, with not a skerrick of cynicism in your voice, is just a testimony to how resilient you are and how much integrity has been part of what you have brought to your role and what you've continued to model here. For, for many senators and members of parliament who could well and truly take a leaf out of your book in terms of a model of deep service for community, because that is exactly what you've, you've given. Um, and of course, you, you did indulge yourself in a, a very brief record of your service, but that again just reveals the humility that you bring to the task that you've undertaken here. Um, I also note that your comments tonight were somewhat tempered by a bit of a sorrowful statement about the things that were unable to be achieved, and in particular your passion for you know, the, the challenge of our time, the, the red alert, the, the climate change reality. That is just so much a part of this time in which we live, and I know that you care about that so much as I do for the next generation and what the impact is. And I, I also uh, stand with you in knowing that there is capacity in this institution to make a change that is material. And, uh, and you acknowledge that, that, that one period of time under the leadership of another great woman uh, from a different party, my party, the Labor Party, the, the former Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. Um, and I have in my drawer the actual first document of when that legislation came in, and I've got it signed by the four ministers who introduced it. Because when that happened, I knew that was a day that we could make a change. And it is heartbreaking sometimes to put all that effort in and get to a point and have it pulled apart. But you know, incrementally, these things, even if we're sorrowful about not having achieved the goals as easily as we might have, if there wasn't such a miserly vision of that issue, um, you have been part of bringing to bear that pressure to move us towards a better place. And uh, I'm sure that the task will get done eventually, Rachel, and it'll be on the back of efforts of people like yourself, but particularly the passion, energy and integrity that you've brought to that, to that issue is absolutely notable and noted. Um, I, I pick up on the remarks um, of Senator uh, Waters about your work at Estimates, and I have not in my entire time here in the Senate seen um, public servants so aware that uh, they're going to have to provide an A3 sheet profoundly densely printed with every single piece of detail about how many people have come or gone from a particular program. And you've just got them so well uh, trained. Well, that's probably a bit, a bit of a, a pejorative term. So well um, prepared for the degree of scrutiny and integrity that you're going to bring to the work that you do. 
both in estimates and in the committee work that you know, I've been so privileged to share in with you. Uh, that is quite some achievement. Now, it's probably not going to make the front page of a newspaper, but it's exactly the kind of thing that should, because that is the real work of the Senate, reviewing the work of government with care and, and kindness and compassion and a standard of professionalism that just is replete in everything that you do. I wanted to acknowledge the service of the great state of Western Australia. It is a beautiful state, and I spent quite some time um, in the year that I took off with my husband, and we travelled all around the country before we, had, before we were grey. Uh, we were nomads, and we were very fit and healthy, and we had the most wonderful time in Western Australia. And you've been a champion for that state, and you've brought a very powerful perspective from the whole state, not just Perth, but uh, you know, the southern areas where you live, but also you're roaming across that state and the, and the very real perspectives um, and the long-standing relationships you've had with people of the First Nations communities across that, of, across that country. Uh, is absolutely known, acknowledged, and you've done great work in that area as well. Um, a lot of people in this place draw attention to the points at which we disagree, and of course we do disagree. But this is democracy in action. It's a choir of different voices. Sometimes we really get it right and we sound harmonious, but discord's part of our journey to understanding what that is. And you know, where there's disagreement. That is a sign of a healthy democracy, and I think that you've stood and had a strident voice when it's required, and as many have reflected, you found the harmonious points whenever you could, uh, and that's a remarkable trait of character for you. Um, you bring to the debate in this place your passion, care, detail and information, but uh, it's in the hearings that I've been able to be with you, whether you've been sharing or we've just been participants, that you really see you know, who, you, who you are and um, how you lift and encourage people so completely unfamiliar with the parliamentary processes into the place. You have, as Senator Lambie said, a really rich and practical knowledge of the standing orders of this place and how it runs, but you are one of the few people who have never used that as a weapon against people who don't. In fact, your understanding of it makes you more respectful of those who don't, and that comes through in everything that you do. You're a person who lives your values, and I'm very pleased to have shared with you quite a few meals after hearings as we've been on the road in all sorts of places. Um, and I think perhaps the word for in integrity means to me that somebody who lives their values, and that is exactly what you do. Uh, in terms of how the Greens are going to go with Senator McKim doing the job that you've been doing as the whip. I just, oh my gosh, he's, he's going to find it incredibly difficult to, to do. I see you marshalling the troops over there. I'm always impressed. You do it discreetly, but you do it very, very, pro uh, very, very powerfully. And uh, everybody knows that they can trust your word and your direction and your insight. And, and that is a great tribute to you as well. Um, I just want to reflect briefly on a, a, a tour that we took, a mental health tour. We, we did it in two ways. One part was in Australia when we were looking uh, at access to mental health services for the country. And, and, and like Larissa, uh, Senator Waters, uh, we were in small planes on a sort of a milk run across the north of the country to see what we saw. And uh, you know, I'm sure that you would remember some of the evidence where people had so little faith in being able to access any decent health care because there's so many locums coming through that they just called all health professionals white Toyotas. Once something like that washes over your experience, it's hard to forget. And discussing that and so many other things over dinner with you, getting to know one another, that's what is one of the great things about being in the Senate, this committee work that we do where we actually get to know each other's stories and find out about each, each other, and, and that helps us do our work more collegially. Uh, we also, um, and I haven't checked with him, but I'm sure he won't mind me acknowledging what a significant trip uh, this was on behalf of the Australian people. It was our research tour with our colleague who co-chairs the Friendship of Mental Health Group here, um, Andrew Wallace, from the other place. Um, we, we work together as Team Australia, and that's one of the things that I'm always proud about when uh, we do, in the olden days, get to travel overseas, and hopefully sometime in the future, the near future, we can hope. Um, to work as Team Australia with you to really pick the eyes out of best practice in other contexts, understand that and bring it back and try and bring that to bear in our committee work and to inform 
the government is, is been something that I've been very honoured to, to do with you. Um, and I just want to acknowledge uh, the drip feeding of some of this pressure, uh, particularly when I was in the role as the Assistant Shadow for Mental Health, um, along with Mr Wallace and yourself, getting to that point with eating disorders where we were able to firmly recommend that there would be a minimum of 20 consultations necessary to help with eating disorders actually did imprint, and Minister Hunt did bring that in. And with that as a flaw, we have seen during COVID that capacity for people to access mental health services, a minimum of 20. That was our work. It did take the minister to listen and implement, but it wouldn't have happened without the sort of passion and energy that you brought to the task. So I'm so proud to have been able to help with that alongside of you. Um, of course, there's the Centrelink compliance, the sort of lovely name of what is really the robo debt debacle, and uh, it's been great giving you know a hit from the left and a hit from the right over here onto the government to try and get them to pay attention to the fact that they inflicted this debt on their own people, and we cannot let it continue. Um, I've been so glad to stand with you and fight that fight, and I've given you my word, and I give it here publicly. I will not let that go, Senator Seawish. That deserves a much better response from the government than we've seen so far. Four rejections, that's just the beginning. We're going to keep pushing this because the Australian people deserve to know. And I will, um, I will channel your determination and uh, perseverance to make sure that we get a good outcome at, on, on that matter. Uh, finally, I want to uh, just acknowledge uh, what a family person you are. And how much of a challenge it has been, I'm sure, for your family to give you up, to provide you in service of the nation on all those flights over 16 years, everywhere that you've been, and the service here in this particular place in the Senate of the country that we're so proud to call our home. Um, your care and compassion for them, uh, I'm sure, is absolutely reflected in what you do here. And I know that you feel like all, I don't know if it's, if it's a, just a deep guilt of being a serving senator or if there's a gender dimension to it as well, but the, to be away. You talked about missing your son's you know, end of school ball and seeing him in all his finery. There are great sacrifices, but your family have enabled you, supported you, and I acknowledge them for doing that, and I acknowledge the sacrifice that you have undertaken in getting what you've given to this place. So finally, can I... Um, wish you a safe return to them after 16 years. Can I wish for you very deep, powdery snow when you resume your skiing career? Um, and I hope it's for many, many more weeks than you've been able to do as you've sandwiched it in between your service in this place. And can I wish you the very best of health into the future? Thank you. Thank you, Senator O'Neill. Senator Hanson-Young. Uh, thank you. Well, um, what lovely uh, comments and reflection on the contribution you've made in this place, Rach. I, um, it must be really weird sitting here and, <laughs> and listening to, to, to everybody just um, piling on their love and admiration and respect. Um, firstly, I just want to say um, you've been a fierce whip. Uh, you know, I've only missed three votes in 13 years that you've been the whip. I just want to put that on the record, because I learnt very early on that you don't um, you don't mess up when Rachel uh, is in charge. Um, you have kept us uh, running a tight ship. Uh, we are a much better party room and a much better green force in this place because of the leadership that you show and that you have uh, steered. It hasn't always been easy. Um, we've had changes of leaders. You've had to train each one of them, <laughs> and um, you've done it um, just beautifully. You've trained uh, new senators who have come on board, and I think uh, everybody's had that experience of where they've shown up late to something or missed a vote or uh, didn't jump to speak when they should have, and um, I think all of our colleagues uh, know that um, you don't do it again. Um, Rachel makes sure that uh, you learn your lesson and you learn it once. Um, but your passion, your empathy, your strength, you know, 
I think in politics we often get uh, categorised as being either pragmatic and strong or emotional and bleeding heart. And you have proven that that is utter rubbish. You can be both empathetic and compassionate, come to an issue with pure emotion and integrity, but be ruthless and pragmatic about how you're going to get it done. And it's harder for women too to do that, and you've proven time and time and time again that those stereotypes are just rubbish. And thank you. The leadership as a woman in this place, I think um, we have to pay testament to. Uh, your, the, the approach you bring uh, to the debates internally and externally, I think um, uh, you've, you've just been an absolute role model. Uh, and over the years when um, you know, things have happened uh, uh, you know, in this place, I remember when you were here, when Cora was thrown out of the chamber, that was a baptism of fire for me. And um, you were there right by my side as a mum. And I'll never forget that. Thank you. The testament of your approach is clearly reflected in this place tonight of people of all sides just respecting the way you engage, your commitment. We've heard the words of honesty and integrity, uh, but you know what? I think more than all of those things, everyone knows you are the hardest worker in this place. Everyone knows that. There is n you never miss. Uh, you're always across your brief. Uh, you've chaired that committee, uh, community affairs, because even though it is um, has one of the biggest workloads, if not the biggest workload uh, in this place of legislation coming forward, but the issues that you deal with take such a toll, and uh, mm -hmm. you've just you've, you have never even wavered uh, in your commitment to that work, and that is incredibly. Uh, inspiring and a uh, and a model for for all of us. Um, I also want to say that, you know, we've got now um, Senator Thorpe as our first uh, First Nations woman in our team and the first First Nations representative from Victoria. Uh, I don't think we would have had Senator Thorpe and Lydia in this team um, necessarily without your leadership internally in our party as well as in the chamber. Um, uh, and the fact that you are, you've committed so much of your life work uh, and work in this place to giving First Nations a voice and a voice for themselves uh, is just incredible. And it is just, it, that's all summed up by the fact that uh, Dorinda Cox is coming in to replace you. You were determined that an, a strong Aboriginal woman, First Nations leader would come in following you, and you've done it. And I'm not convinced that um, uh, you know, others may um, have um, aims and aspirations to do things like that, but you've actually delivered it. And I think that that is a, a wonderful testament to you. So thank you. Um, others have already mentioned the uh, adoptions inquiry Oh, the emotion uh, as that inquiry went, did its work that you led was incredible. Um, the emotion in, in this place uh, on the day was incredible. But I know from talking to you over the months and years as the evidence was being um, gathered, just the toll that that was taking uh, and hearing people's stories and feeling them deeply and having that sense of responsibility that you had to do something with it. Because we can set up inquiries and we can have people come and tell their stories and we can take, uh, give them the sense of, uh, of trust, but you took it with pure responsibility that you knew something had to come from it. This wasn't just about a tick and flick process. Um, and I think, um, oh, 
many, many people uh, are indebted to you because of that. So, um, on behalf of all of them, thank you. Um, we are going to miss you. Uh, Senator McKim um, has big shoes to fill, and uh, I'll put it here first. I, I think um, I reckon it'll be a bit rough in the beginning. I think um, I, I think there'll be a, there, there'll be a bit of um, mess as we muddle through, but uh, that's because no one can no one can replace you, and no one's going to be able to do the job the way you do it. So, um, good luck, Nick. <laughs> Um, your care and the absolute understanding that you have for the dignity of people who are vulnerable, um, I, I don't. I think it's very hard to find anybody in this place that can match that, Rachel. You don't look down your nose ever at people. You've never made people feel less than they are and because of the position that you hold. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it, the parliament can be a pretty overwhelming place at times and inviting people in to give evidence or offering support to them or saying that you know, you're going to uh, work in the parliament for them. Um, you haven't just taken their stories and given them a voice. You've welcomed them into this institution with open arms. And you have, a, you have joined that connection between us as a parliament, you as a legislator, and them as the people that we are here for. This door might close, but in your heart and your mind, it's never closed. And uh, I think that's the great the great service that you've brought to this place and to the people of Australia and to the most vulnerable in our community. I'm going to miss you a lot, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Hanson Young. Senator Reynolds. Mm. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy President. And I too stand to pay tribute to my fellow West Australian senator and colleague, Senator Rachel Seawitt. Um, and I associate myself with all of the comments uh, that we've heard so far from right across this chamber in what is a very fitting acknowledgement of your service to the Senate and also to our nation. I was very saddened, genuinely very saddened, to hear of your decision to leave after 16 years. But then conversely, I was really happy for you as well after 16 years of crossing the Nullarbor. And one of my first uh, recollections of Senator Seawitt was crossing the Nullarbor time and time again for committee hearings and would do it twice in one day to attend a committee hearing, you know, which is just a sign of the dedication and passion and commitment that you have, but also the sacrifices your family have made uh, for everything that you've done. Um, everyone in this place knows, and we've heard tonight about your, your passion, your commitment, your respect for the dignity of humanity. Um, you know, wherever and wherever you find it. Um, I've also greatly respected and sometimes been the benefactor of your uh, uh, very uh, deep honesty um, and your very loud <laughs> uh, honesty but holding us now on this side of the chamber to account. Um, but as everybody else here has said, it is absolutely clear that you have always been driven by your passion um, for justice and your commitment uh, to, to people and to, to what you believe in. Uh, like other people here, um, it took me about five minutes in this place to also see your incredible knowledge and the width and the depth of your knowledge in social policy, um, it, whether it's in this chamber, whether it's at committees, whether it's estimates. And I've sat again on the other side of the table and uh, also with uh, officials who are suitably uh, prepared because they know the level of which that you come and you've always come to the table. But you also, because of that, do speak with authority uh, on the matters and when you speak, we all listen. Sometimes we have no choice to listen <laughs> with the passion and the, you know, the volume, but we always listen and we respect. And as uh, Minister Rustin has said, 
is uh, you always uh, show us where to look, quite often before we even know that there is cause to look at particular issues. Um, I've also admired your, and I don't understand how, how you have not only the work ethic but the capacity to work and manage multiple uh, hearings um, and whipping and everything else that you do. And as you've pointed out, um, one of the dirty secrets that probably shouldn't be such a dirty secret and one of the absolute joys of serving and privilege of serving in this place is the collegiality between those on all sides of this chamber. Um, and while people wouldn't necessarily think that uh, Senator Seawitt and I have a lot in common, uh, given our positions on things and our, our party positions, um, you really, along with you know, the wonderful Claire Moore, uh, did show me that we can work together and we can find common ground uh, in our committee work to make a real difference uh, for Australians. And that is one of the many powerful things about this place. Um, we did find many, and as we've heard with you know, everyone else who's spoken, common ground on a number of issues. I just want to highlight three. Um, I'm incredibly grateful that you uh, supported my very first inquiry I put forward into young people in aged care. And again, that is an inquiry that made a huge difference to the lives of thousands of people in disabilities who had been consigned to life in an aged care facility simply because they were disabled and there was nowhere else for them to go. I'm particularly proud now that I have carriage of that and I feel a great sense of responsibility for that and so I'd like to thank you uh, for that. Um, we have some unfinished business in the uh, interrupted inquiry into uh, the plight of Australians with Lyme disease and the disgraceful way that I believe and we share a belief that they are, not, they are not heard, they are not seen and they are certainly not getting the treatment they deserve. So that is still unfinished business for me and so I will be taking so take that forward. Probably the one that, that possibly bemused you the most, um, but I'm very grateful for your support as a senator for Western Australia, was the inquiry into Western Force. <laughs> um, and I, again, you, you had faith and you said, Okay, we'll have a look into this. And while we couldn't change the outcome of the, disgrace, you know, of the disgraceful behaviour that we just discovered from Rugby Australia, you know, Rugby, Rugby Australia, we made a huge difference to tens of thousands of Western Australians and to the players in getting answers on what had happened uh, to their much beloved team. So, Rachel, in, in conclusion, um, I've only ever experienced this chamber with you in it and not only with your leadership as the whip, um, but also with your leadership in community affairs and on social policy. And you have certainly inspired me and sometimes also made me want to be that better senator and that better person on a lot of these inquiries. The Senate will certainly be uh, the lesser, and I think we'll also be the lesser for not having you in, in the chamber. But as so many people have said, and I know we'll continue to say, you have made every single day of those, what was it, 5,000 odd days that you've been serving in the Senate. I thank you very much uh, for the dignity that you've brought to the Senate and I think for the contribution you've made to our democracy as well. So I wish you and your family well in whatever you decide to do next, on and off the paddleboard. I know you'll do it with great passion, you'll do it with great commitment and you'll do it you know, so that everybody will hear. So, Rachel, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for what you've given to me in this place, and um, good luck. Senator Lyons. Thank you, Mr. President, and um, I too rise to add my contributions to your service, Rachel, and uh, echo everything that's been said about you today. I was thinking earlier today of when. Um, you and I first met, and you won't remember this. Uh, I was at the union, uh, at United Workers Union, and uh, there was some protest in Subiaco, and I want to say aged care, but it was outside the council chamber, so I don't know, maybe it was childcare. It was one or the other. And uh, we had a bunch of members there, and uh, we were protesting, and you came along, um, and you, you must have just seen us there, or maybe you'd heard about the strike. and. You offered your support, and um, you know, you know me. I'm dyed in the wool labour, and I thought, 
Mm. But I was really impressed that you'd taken the time to come along and, and support the members. So whether it was aged care or childcare, you were there supporting us. Um, the next time I met you was again when I was still at the union and I was the person that had responsibility for getting those um, reforms through, which Mark Butler did as, when he was minister, the Living Longer, Living Better. And um, it was my job to take aged care workers uh, to meet you and to lobby you. Um, I didn't know what your view was, but now knowing you uh, much, you know, many years after that, I'm sure that you did support. Um, you probably always supported the reforms, but nevertheless, we had a job to do, and that was to, you know, harangue you to death with aged care workers uh, who came to um, tell you their stories on more than one occasion, I'm sure. Um, so, so thank you for that. I want to echo the other things that have been said about you. You, you are a woman of great humanity. You, your integrity comes through in everything that you do, as does your advocacy and passion. Your drive and commitment that everyone has spoken to about tonight. But the, the two areas that um, our lives and paths tend to cross are on First Nations issues. And uh, I'm sure that uh, secretly you're quite pleased that the Labor Party, Party finally got there on the cashless debit card. Thank goodness. Um, and uh, I know that we've often shared um, platforms at protest meetings outside of the Senate, um, but we've also shared a lot of work um, on Senate committees. And um, yes, Senator Reynolds just reminded me of that Western Force one. I think I had to be there reluctantly because there wasn't very much of that committee uh, work I enjoyed at all, but the rest of it's been good. Um, we've had, we've, I think I've got to know you better um, th this year and last year on the, all the spa flights that we shared. We, were, we usually sat together and had great chats about family and uh, all things outside of the Senate, really, as just a couple of women that had a lot of interests in common. I look forward to your journey on uh, building your house. I don't know we had lots of chats about that. You will be missed in this Senate, um, your advocacy particularly and your passion, but I know that um, you've served Australians well and uh, you'll continue to do that in um, whatever uh, you do next. And I'm sure Chris will <coughs> welcome having you home. Um, well, it might take a bit of time getting used to it, because sometimes our partners, even though they miss us, I think they get a bit used to us coming and going, so that'll be an adjustment. The FIFO worker is FIFO no longer. Um, all the best, and thank you for your absolute commitment to this place and, and, uh, and to ordinary Australians who do it tough. Senator McKim, remotely. Sorry, Senator McKim, we're missing you. If you're no, I, Senator McKim, what I'll do is I'll go to the next speaker to allow you to log in and log out again. That seems to be the, an effective. It does seem to happen towards the end of the day after we've had a lot of people online. Uh, Senator Brockman. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll just make sure my speaker is working. Uh, I won't take up much time of the chamber tonight. Uh, Rachel, I know you've got colleagues who are still waiting to speak. And I know that many people in this place have spent a lot more time than me with you here, and so I certainly want, want to give them the chance to speak tonight. However, I do rise to speak um, because you have made such a contribution to this place, and I think it is really important that we acknowledge that. Uh, I go back to 2000 and 2006, 2007, when I first started travelling to this place, and I don't really believe you remember me. but. Uh, I, I first met you, Senator Seawitt, uh, as policy director for the Pastoralists and Graziers Association. And I guess I came to this place as a pretty green individual uh, in, a, uh, in terms of the political process and politics. And I guess I had a rosy eyed view that everyone sitting on this side, uh, uh, not sure it was this side, oh yes, it was this side then. Uh, would be in favour of what I was ad advocating for and what the Pastoralists and Graziers Association was advocating for, and everybody on that side would be opposed. And uh, Senator Seawitt, you were one of the, my very clear memories of that period of someone who, because of your background, because of your background as a West Australian, as someone with experience in agricultural science, 
experience out in the bush in Jeremungup in, in Western Australia and many other places, uh, who actually understood the issue. Uh, not very many people in this place actually did. And so my first experience of you was of completely putting on head those, I guess, green preconceptions, preconceptions about uh, inexperienced preconceptions about what people would believe in this place. Uh, and then I came to the point where I realised that uh, some of my uh, national colleagues, uh, not colleagues at the time, some of, some of the nationals actually vigorously opposed what I was there representing. And even many in the Liberal Party were pretty wishy-washy about it all. And this is, of course, the, the ending of the export monopoly of, of wheat, the single desk, as it was called. But you had a very clear-eyed view of the economics of that. And I recognise that maybe we shouldn't always come to this place with preconceptions about what people are going to think. Then on entering this place as a senator, on uh, my first day on duty, I was given the, the chair of the uh, Community Affairs Legislation Committee and deputy chair of the Community Affairs References Committee. That says more about the lack of backbenchers in, in, uh, in the coalition than it says about my talents and skills. But it was, uh, was wonderful working with you for, that, for the year that I was on that committee. It wasn't a space I was particularly comfortable in. Uh, it, it wasn't a policy area where I had a great deal of knowledge. We uh, dealt with things in the, in the References Committee. Uh, such as the inquiry into transvaginal mesh and the inquiry into mitochondrial donation. Now, neither, neither of those have been brought up here tonight, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're not. Uh, you know, clearly, you've worked on a number of inquiries that have a great deal of import, um, but they were both inquiries where we managed, and you managed, as chair of that committee, to work through a process where we could highlight the issues, come to a unified position on a references committee report and advance the interests of two groups in that, in that situation, and we've heard of many more tonight, two groups who hadn't been heard, two groups whose uh, 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 issues needed to be much more widely ventilated and, as a result of those two committees, two small, thing, two small things for us, two very big things for those people involved. But those issues were ventilated, they were heard, actions were taken. So I honour you, Senator Seawitt. I think you have done an amazing job in this place. I wish you all the best and your family for the future. Now I'll try Senator McKim again. Thank you, President. Um, I, thank you very much. And Rach, it's so sad that so many of your colleagues can't be with you personally this evening to to support you and to show you personally just how much we love you and how much we're going to miss you. I, I really wish we could all be there with you. I'm going to begin by sharing some words for you from two friends of mine who are two really, really good friends of yours. Firstly, these words. Rachel is one of the most unsung heroes of progressive social action in our national parliament. She also had a big hand in freeing our Southern Hemisphere from the bloody scourge of whaling. Students of political botany looking for a flower in the swamp will do well to study the career of Greens Senator Rachel Seward. Those beautiful words are from former Senator and former leader of the Australian Greens, Bob Brown. And I'm sure you'll guess who the next words are from pretty early on. Rach, what can I add to all the accolades that you so deserve about your exemplary career in the Senate? We were elected together in 2004 and took up our seats when there were only four of us. Bob Brown, Kerry Nettle, you and I. You've been a relentless campaigner and a staunch, staunch advocate for the Greens and for our vision of a just world and a planet capable of sustaining life in the face of the global climate and biodiversity emergencies. Whether it's sharks or the forests or James Price Point or the Aboriginal petroglyphs of the Burrup, you've been there advocating for protection. You've travelled the length and breadth of the country to support Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and secured an important milestone by addressing petrol sniffing and securing non-aromatic opal fuel. 
You stood up courageously from day one against robo-debt and the cashless welfare card, and you were right. In your service to the parliament and the people of, the Tas and the people of Australia, it has been so special. In an age when people are so cynical about parliamentarians, you have demonstrated what integrity, fairness and commitment mean in your role as the Chair of Community Affairs Committee and also in your role as Greens Whip. One of the moments I treasure is the day in 2013 when Prime Minister Gillard delivered the apology to the people who suffered so deeply because of forced adoption practices. Rach, you moved for and drove that inquiry and chaired it, and you were there in the Great Hall to witness how much it meant to so many people. Your compassion and commitment delivered for so many. Thank you for your service to the Parliament, to the Greens, and for your friendship and support during my time in the Senate. And those words, of course, are from former Senator and former Leader of the Australian Greens, Christine Milne. As usual, Christine and Bob are far more eloquent uh, than I'm able to be, so I'll just add a few brief words of my own, Rach. Rachel, you are genuinely one of my political heroes. I'm in awe of what you have achieved, and I'm also in awe of how you've achieved it and how you've conducted yourself on your political journey. You've been a mighty, mighty voice and activist for First Nations people, for climate action and for nature, particularly for your beloved marine environment and even more particularly for, you, for your beloved marine environment in your beloved waters of Western Australia. Your advocacy for people doing it tough, particularly those who've been left without work in our sometimes very brutal modern society has been without equal in the political arena. Your participation in the campaign to increase the rate of JobKeeper helped to build a movement, and it helped give a voice to so many who at that time did not have a voice. Please be proud of what you've achieved, Rach. It's truly the most amazing record. And if I've been or, or can be half as effective as you have been, half as passionate as you are about the issues that really matter and represent people and nature with half the integrity that you have, I will end my time in politics a very happy person. As an aside, uh, I know that I've got large shoes to fill as the whip for the Australian Greens, and I might say um, my shoes will be nowhere near as fashionable as yours have consistently been during my time in the Senate. And uh, if I can whip um, our colleagues who can, I'll put it kindly, sometimes be slightly recalcitrant, uh, if I can whip them half as hard and half as well as you did, Rachel, I may have some small hope uh, of keeping them in line as well as you did. Um, Rach, I know um, for you, this is not you know, retirement from active life. It's not retirement from activism. It is simply retirement from the Senate. And I have no doubt there'll be so many people uh, and, in fact, our planet will have cause to thank you for your relentless advocacy and your relentless activism into the future. Please take great care of yourself. Take great care of those that you love. And you and yours are always welcome back to our rustic little shack in the bush down on the Tasman Peninsula. You are, Rachel, truly the most beautiful and amazing human. All the very best. Senator Dean Smith. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, Senator Seward, Rachel, uh, as whips, I know that uh, the brevity of my remarks will not be taken as uh, disinterest. But as uh, whips in this Senate, um, and no one knows this more than you as a result of the length of service that you have been the whip for the Australian Greens, our job is to make it work for everybody else. 
uh, and often that means uh, sacrificing the things that are important to us and sacrificing the contributions that we might like to make. But I will make my comments brief in order to allow the many others that are still to make their contributions have an opportunity. In your contribution you talked about uh, being disappointed and frustrated with the action on climate matters. But I think uh, by any measure your contribution on so many issues leaves no space for disappointment, no space for frustration. And I just want to reflect on one. And it's probably not, I don't expect you to remember the time that you first met me, but I certainly remember the time that I first met you. And we were in Alice Springs and we're doing a committee inquiry into low aromatic fuel. Your contribution in keeping young Indigenous people safe in remote communities across our country has not deserved the has not had the heraldry that I think it deserves. That private senator's bill that you brought to this place and which was agreed, and which was sent to the other place and which was agreed, is just one of thirty private senators bills or private members bills that have made it into law in the history of this country since 1901. That is a remarkable achievement on an issue that has absolutely gone a long way to ensure that young people, not just Indigenous but predominantly Indigenous, are kept from harm's way. I have admired the way that you have worked, your conviction, your integrity is a model that senators in this place and senators that are yet to come can style themselves on. You reflected quite accurately that not enough gets talked about all the things that we do agree on and all the things that we work so constructively on and that change the lived experience for so many people in our country. Our names will not be remembered in the future, but the legacy that some of us have been able to live to, to, to deliver for other people will be felt. And I just, it's hard to imagine someone who has made a more lasting contribution to improving the lived experience of so many people. One of the things that I have observed working closely with you is how important it is for people to have a voice on issues. How important it is and how empowering it is for those people when they get heard by senators through the parliamentary committee process or through other means. You drive a hard bargain as a whip, um, but what I have always enjoyed is that yesterday's challenges are not carried over today or into tomorrow. And that is a real testimony, testimony to your graciousness and your decency as a, as a person. And you mentioned that uh, you know um, that you, you come to this place um, having come, having followed other green senators, um, and as significant as their contributions were in their own way, uh, your contribution is the force from the west. Your contribution is the one that I think that many many people uh, should set themselves and style themselves upon because it has just been so significant. I've enjoyed working with you on grandparent carers. I've enjoyed working with you on the important issues around the National Redress Scheme. I've enjoyed hearing your contributions about the Kimberley in the adjournment debates, even though we might disagree with what is, getting to, what, what is the right way to get to, to improving Indigenous disadvantage in this country and preserving the Kimberley's wonderful environment. Uh, congratulations. It has been a remarkable achievement. Uh, I'm sure there are more things for you to do, uh, and I look forward to supporting you in whatever way I can uh, over the future, but congratulations to you and uh, best wishes to you and your family for the future. Senator Rice. Thanks, President. And Rach, we're just going to miss you so much. The contributions that people have made this evening just show how loved you are and what a massive contribution you have made, what a difference you have made to the people of Australia, to the other creatures that we share this planet with, to the people of the world. 
Um, and it's a, a huge contribution. And you are such a, a role model that I have looked up to and think in terms of working together and working collaboratively of what you can achieve by doing that. Such a combination which is so rare in this place of being that mixture of absolutely steely determination and on top of your game and determined to go for it, but with a heart of gold and that love and care. And I think that's at the core of what makes you and your contribution so special, that it is grounded in love. It's grounded in love and care. And so then it's treating everyone genuinely that you have invited in, that you have worked with, that um, you want, you genuinely respect them and want to see people to be able to achieve their best. You want everyone to have the opportunities that you know that we all deserve. Um, and as that, you, that's why you have achieved so much and that's why everyone respects you. And it's why, and I think it's, it's grounded, I mean, you said in your, the beginning of your contribution tonight that you said you took a bit of time to work out whether you were really a politician. And in fact, that makes you the best sort of politician and of which there are so few people in this place that have got that, that genuineness, that care, that, that love for people, for humanity, for the planet, that you bring every ounce of your being um, with and every ounce of the work that you do is imbued with that love and that care. Um, I think the thing that I really appreciate about you and having worked side by side with you, it is that combination of being on top of your game and knowing that, that such, such knowledge, such ability to, to know what, what has to happen and with that determination, but that collaborative approach. And, and it's a, working with people to achieve those outcomes. The other thing that I really think, um, we know your amazing suite of work that you've done in this place on making life better for people and sort of the social services and improving people's lot. But I know that your passion for nature is just as much there and particularly your, the, the wonderful, beautiful environments of Western Australia from the forests of Southwest WA through to the Ningaloo, roof, Ningaloo Reef and, and, and that you derive so much joy and so much support from being in nature. Um, and for that, you know, I really feel that, that so much resonates with me as well. The other thing that I have really, you know, it's just been so, so wonderful to work alongside you is both being women, we're a very similar age, having come through the environment movement and then in the Senate, and coping with with you know the issues that go with being a woman of the age that we are of you know who aren't always treated seriously and so you know women in their 40s 50s and 60s who the world can just look through and having to actually speak up and 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 have attention paid to you and the way that you have done that has just been a lesson for everybody um I agree with, with Senator Smith that, and others that your record, it's been understated. I mean, people don't know what you have contributed to the country and to the world um, because you are so humble. And I hope that having this, you know, valedictory speeches tonight, people will realise what a special contribution it is. And it should be sung from the, you know, from the rooftops. Um, because it's the sort of thing that people want to see in their politicians. People are cynical about their politicians because they think that they don't really care. With, you know, they're just in it for themselves. Whereas your experience and your contribution has shown that that's not the case, um, that you are there out of love, you are there out of care, you are there out of, out of that determination to be doing good for people on the planet. So, look, we're going to miss you. Your shoes are enormous. You absolutely are the hardest working person in the place. You know, it would take six senators, I think, to, to replace you. So we're all just going to have to struggle along to get by without Rachel. And I just, yeah, really, um, 
thank you. What well, just want to thank you for your contribution and and really wish you all the best. You have more time with your family, you know, looking after your your elderly mum. Another thing that we've got in common and sort of juggling those family responsibilities and know that yeah, just just have a bit more time to enjoy yourself and to really enjoy the fruits of of knowing that that you've done what you were able to do in your time here. So thank you, Rach. Senator Wish Wilson. Thanks. Rach, I was thinking you didn't deserve to be here tonight without your without your colleagues and, and a full Senate. Um, but on reflection about that, I thought, well, you know, there's a lot of battlers out there. There's a lot of Aussies doing it tough. And, and you've been such a champion for those people for so long that I'm sure you'd be taking this in your stride. This is a time in history that it is what it is. And tonight is what it is. And we would all love to be with you tonight and, and share in this moment, but we can do that through this remarkable technology um, that we're seeing this through tonight. Um, there's been so much said already that I, that I agree with. Um, in this kind of age of populism, uh, you know, the, the age of demagogues, which go all the way back to Roman days where it's about getting short grabs on media and it's, it's about getting attention and uh, getting in the media frame. You know, I reflect on the work that you do Christine's absolutely right about you being an unsung hero. The, the amount of hours you put in, it's been talked about your committee work and the work you've done for the Senate, but we also know the work you put into our party uh, to, you know, to work across the states and across our national council. Uh, it's just, it's remarkable. It's remarkable how you do that. I think one of the most common questions we all get as senators is, how can you do this? How can you do this every day? How can you deal with the things that get thrown at you and, and seeing people constantly undermining climate action, all the things we stand for. And I think it takes a very remarkable person to be resilient in the face of that and continue to chip away and never give up and always remain optimistic and always take action. And I think, um, you know, you are you are a siren song to that and, and, and your career is, is so. Um, like me, I know you're a saltwater person Took me a few years to wrestle the uh, Healthy Oceans portfolio off you, but I, <laughs> I just wanted to acknowledge tonight, um, it has been mentioned in a few of the contributions, uh, your background, the work you've done for the oceans, all the work you put into the National Marine Parks campaign over many years before Parliament and in Parliament, the work you've done for Ningaloo, for sharks, for whales, you know, You've been, you've been a great role model for me, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the work that you've done for the oceans. And, you know, it, it's an interesting reflection. We, people often frame the Greens as being either social justice Greens or, or environmental Greens, and the media love to have a field day with this as to our detractors. But look at you as an example. You, you've, been, you've, been, you've got an amazing history working for the environment. Uh, on climate change, on oceans, and a whole range of issues. And here you are, the accolades you've received tonight, uh, all the work you've done, tackling inequality and standing up for the battlers of this country, for the underprivileged, for those doing it tough. Um, in many ways, you are the complete green. Uh, and can I, can I say, can I say, watching all this, these speeches tonight, what a bloody great minister you would have made if the Greens had been in government. Seriously, like who else, who else has got the talent pool uh, that we have got? And you are a classic example of that. Like the country is missing out by not having people like you, Rachel, uh, in ministerial positions. If you've been able to do what you've been able to do without being a minister, imagine what this country could do with the Greens in government. Um, I don't want to be political and this say, but I actually really mean that. I really, really mean that. Um, I've, I'll be honest, I, I, will, I will finish up very soon. I, I don't get intimidated by many people, being the person I am, but I've always been a little bit intimidated by you, Rachel. I've known my place around you. I might, have, I milk, I might well be one of those recalcitrant uh, senators Nick McKim was referring to earlier, but 
Um, I remember when I had my first weekend with you and Fluff down and yelling up. Uh, Nat and I got there quite late. It was getting dark and you had arranged for me to have a mini mal and you gave me a vest to wear and Fluff said, come on, let's go and get some waves. And you and I and Fluff walked down to the beach. Nat was uh, up, at, up at the reading a book. And I was thinking to myself, crikey, it's getting dark. What are we doing? I, was, I paddled out. There was still some light to see a couple of waves. It was pretty big. I think we'd been informed there'd been a white shark in the area just a few days before. Uh, and there were, there were Fluff and I sitting out there, got a few waves, took me maybe two or three attempts to get out. And I said to him, mate, it's getting a bit dark. Don't you think we should be going in? And he's like, no, that's, that's the whole point. The show starts when it gets dark. Who's going to turn the lights on on his surfboard? And I was sitting out there a shark bait thinking, I'm caught between the devil and the deep blue sea here. I don't want to let down Rachel. <laughs> I don't want to look weak. Uh, or, or I'm going to get eaten by a shark in, in the dark at yelling up, um, which is a pretty intimidating place to be. So, um, look, you know, I'd also like to say that your wedding uh, down at yelling up, uh, I think it was my happiest moment uh, in the Greens with the Greens party room. The way you pulled everyone together, it was just such a beautiful night. In fact, it was, it was just an amazing weekend. So um, thank you for being a friend to me when I started. Thank you being, for being a mentor. Thank you for putting up with me as a whip. Uh, and I look forward to working with you for many, many more years on oceans and on the issues that really matter. Good on you, Rach. Just for the information of Senators, it's 7.20 when the adjournment is scheduled to commence. I'll be seeking the leave of the Senate to continue this until 7.55 when I have one adjournment speech to turn to. So I'm going to ask Senators, particularly those not from the Greens, to be considerate of their Greens colleagues who have yet to speak, because I still have a dozen speakers on the speakers list. Senator Askew. Thank you, Mr President, and I will be brief. I just simply wish to associate myself with the comments made around the chamber this evening. Um, especially in recognition of Rachel's service to this place. Um, as we heard earlier, Rachel has been the chair of the Community Affairs Reference Committee for many years. And upon my arrival here in 2019, I became her deputy chair and chair of the Ledge Committee and have had the opportunity to work very closely with you since. I cannot express more sincerely my thanks to you um, for your support since that time. It's been amazing and I've really enjoyed having the opportunity to work with you, I've, um, especially like in committee hearings especially, but also when we've had the opportunity to attend hearings around the country when we were able to travel. Um, it just gave us that opportunity to work closely and to get to know each other better. I've found that you're a very genuine person. You genuinely believe in what you do and you represent your constituency faithfully and as many people have discussed it this evening already, your immense capability and your capacity for workload is beyond belief. Your passion for the portfolio areas that are encompassed by the, human, uh, the Community Affairs Committee, um, it's clearly evident of your commitment to the cause and the way you undertake your role. So well done and thank you. Although we don't always agree on policy, we have always been able to respect each other's differing opinions and work together in a professional and collegiate manner. And I think most people around the, the chamber have mentioned similar things today, so thank you for that. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you all the best for the future, genuinely, for whatever comes next. And I look forward to no doubt crossing paths with you in the future. And I just want to wish you all the best for your family because I know that that has been the driving force behind your decision and I hope that everything goes well with your mum and your family and that you enjoy spending more time together. So thank you for your service to this place and thank you for your caring friendship. Thank you. Senator Steele John. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Now, in talking with Rach about uh, this speech um, uh, tonight, I repeatedly uh, promised that I wouldn't say anything embarrassing or that would make her cry. Um, and I will endeavour to keep that promise. Um, I have also taken an unusual step and written most of this down um, in the knowledge that probably at some point during this uh, contribution I am likely to start crying myself. Uh, but here we go. Anyway, so Senator Rachel Seavers, or Rach as anybody that's ever met you, uh, actually always calls you at all times apart from committee um, and during question time. Uh, 
Uh, you are one of the most impressive people I have ever met. I've been in awe of you since the first time we ever interacted uh, in the Greens WA. Rachel, you generously share your experience, your, your wisdom and your ability as an authentic and fearless campaigner with anybody and everybody that asks you. You are truly the master of Senate procedure. Um, nobody uh, after you will ever, I think, come anywhere near as close to your knowledge of how the chamber works as you. And we will do our best uh, to fumble on in your absence. Uh, but I thank, I thank the stars uh, that you will, I'm sure, after a break, be at the end of the phone for us to ask some questions of. Your commitment to our green movement runs so deep that I swear that if you banged yourself, you would literally bleed green. Your commitment to consensus, our four pillars, and your loyalty to ensuring that our members and their needs and the needs of community are centred as well as the environment, is absolutely incredible. You are a true custodian of our movement, determined, driven, and deeply passionate. You, can, you possess from those things this incredible frustration uh, and indignity in the face of injustice that I think echoes the feeling of so many in our community and gives all around you the energy to continue the fight. In thinking about how to summarize such an incredible career and such an incredible experience of working with you over the last three and a half years, these words of determination, of passion, and of deep commitment spring straight to the front of my mind. A defining thread that weaves through every aspect of your work is a soul deep commitment to centering the needs of the community who are so often shut out of this place. This commitment has shone through with the number of committees, inquiries that you've established, chaired and participated in. And I am absolutely sure if the Guinness World uh, Book of World Records ever decides to name it up, and test uh, the, the, the record winner of the person that has spent the most hours in committee, it will be you easily. So I suggest you take some time in your retirement to send them an email because you'll surely get the record, I think, in the post. Um, and my goodness, the, the outcomes that you have achieved for the community in this time are an incredible testament to all the values and the hard work that you bring. And I, I want to name up a few of them, uh, because if I spent the whole time doing it, we would be here until tomorrow morning. And as whip, you'd probably be texting me halfway through telling me to shut up. So I'll name just a few. Um, your work uh, leading the campaign to increase income support uh, is absolutely defining. You have fought tooth and nail for your entire career not only to support uh, people that need it across the spectrum, but also on that specific issue of increasing uh, income support, and also uh, in ensuring that the robo-debt scandal was called out and called up immediately. And it is you, I think, uh, that deserve, deserves the lion's share of the, of, the, uh, of the congratulations alongside the community for the work that you did in revealing the absolute scandal uh, of robo debt, uh, others may well have come on board, but in the curry in the wake of your courage and your fearlessness, they swam. And because of that dedication to that issue and that community that was affected, uh, there is now an opportunity for justice and redress for people that were affected. And so too. Uh, in your opposition to the cashless debit card. Absolutely incredible, vital work that you led alongside the community from the front, fearlessly always. As a disabled person and as a member of the disability community, 
I feel a great sense of debt and gratitude to you for your work uh, in the inquiry into violence, abuse and exploitation of disabled people. That was in itself a historic investigation uh, into those issues that resulted in a recommendation which ended up in the realisation of a Royal Commission. And just today, um, we have seen another opportunity to strengthen that investigation, uh, an investigation that you played an incredible role uh, in bringing together and making the case for. Also on older Australians, I, I will never forget uh, the first time we had a detailed conversation about aged care. Uh, and you spent, I think, somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the midst of 30 minutes explaining to me the ACFI, um, the Aged Care uh, Funding Instrument, which I have never forgotten uh, that acronym and what it means, and the fact that nobody else seems to know what it is, how it works, or why it's listed at the levels of funding um, that it is. And, and it was this window into this incredible uh, cache of knowledge that you hold. And in reflecting on, on adding it to this yesterday, uh, I was triggered to think about how many times in the last three years the sentence, oh, I'll ask Rach, or Rachel, no, or I bet Rach was around for that, I'll give her a buzz, have gone through my head. Um, and the reality uh, that, that uh, you are, are ending your, your time formally with us uh, is tempered only in the uh, anxiety that induces by the knowledge that after a very good rest, um, I know that you will uh, be at the end of the telephone uh, or at the end of the email uh, if we need to know what a committee did in 2005 in relation to a detailed piece of legislation, because you will still know, I'm absolutely sure. Um, on, on the environment and on marine parks but, uh, particularly, there is nobody that I have ever seen um, speak with passion, um, with such passion and intelligence uh, in relation to not only the need to protect our precious places, the env marine environment, but also the knowledge of actually how to get it done. Um, and the work that you did in establishing that uh, system of marine parks, um, it stands, I think, uh, as still the model that we should now be working uh, to go back to and to improve on. You've been a fearless champion uh, for the natural precious places of our uh, state of WA, um, and there is so much good that has come from your commitment, uh, particularly to places like James Price Point, uh, the Kimberley generally, and in, indeed to Ningaloo um, as well. Through the through the highs and lows of the last 16 years, you have always been there for us as a movement, prepared to advocate for community and our planet, always offering a way forward. I would, in, in talking about your incredible contribution tonight, be remiss not to acknowledge the, the fabulous team that you have had over the years uh, to all of Team Rach, I'd like to thank you for your energy and your commitment to our movement. You have supported, led, managed, rescheduled, drafted and campaigned like the best of them. And I want to thank you for that, as Rachel has done too. Uh, to, to Rach, my, my, my very good friend and dearest Senate colleague, I hope that your days are filled with as many peanut M&Ms as you can eat. Ocean, <laughs> ocean paddle boards and sunny days in the Southwest. You are truly one of the great, powerful women from the West of Greens movement. I look forward to continuing to see you on the floor of every green event with <laughs> showing us all absolutely how it's done. If you haven't seen Chris and Rach hit the floor at an event, you haven't seen two people hit the floor. 
as we continue our fight for people and planet. I want to thank you sincerely from the depths of my heart for your wisdom, for your encouragement, and for setting an example of what it means to be a Green who advocates for our community and for our planet in this place and at all times. I will miss you, mate. I will miss you dearly. Although, as I keep having to remind myself and everybody around me, it seems you're not actually dying. You're, <laughs> you're just going for a good rest that is damn well, well deserved. Um, and then you'll be on to your next big thing. On behalf of everyone in WA, I want to thank you for all that you have done. For every moment of service and devotion and dedication, all of the weekends, all of the long weekends, all of the calls taken even though you were on holiday, all of the committee meetings chaired at four o'clock in the morning, all of the times that you've had to grit your teeth, and uh, suppress what you might have said uh, because we haven't turned up to the vote or we don't know what we're doing. Um, for your forbearance and your fearlessness, I, I thank you uh, from the depths of my heart um, and wish you the very, very best in the next chapter of your incredible life. Wow, a green spoon. Okay, I'll remind senators we have 35 minutes to go and a dozen speakers left, so particularly with a couple of Senator uh, Seawood's colleagues to go. Senator Davey. Thank you. And uh, acknowledging the amount of people that are left, I will um, keep it brief. Uh, but I really did want to rise to say thank you to Senator Seawood. Uh, when I entered the Australian Parliament in 2019, which is a very short time ago compared to um, Rachel, but like Rachel, I was thrown into the deep end, and on day one, I became my party's whip in the Senate. Um, I had no idea what the job entailed, where I needed to be, or what I needed to do. And the only way I was able to learn was from my fellow cross-party whips, Senator Urquhart, Senator Smith, and Senator Seawert. And I think together we've been a very good team. Uh, Senator Seawert has been a role model in this regard. She's been open. She's been very patient with me. Uh, and I, as I learned the ropes, she's shown a willingness to work across partisan lines on procedure and administrative operations in the best interests of this parliament that allows us to focus our attention on what we are actually here to do, which is to represent our constituents. And she does that to her fullest. She is proof that showing people respect does not compromise values or ideology. And this reflects the kind of person she is. She is thoughtful, she is driven, and she is highly, highly passionate. Uh, and for that, I thank her. I mean, one of the greatest things any of us, any Australian can do is put their hand up for federal parliament and office. And uh, Senator Seawert did that in 2005, and many people before me tonight have spoken on all her achievements. Um, and so I want to let other people have a turn to say their thanks and their piece. So I'll cut out half of what I was going to say. Um, but I do want to highlight that, uh, Rachel, you are one of the lucky ones in this house, uh, in this chamber. You get to leave on your terms not those of the Australian voters, nor those of a party executive. And that is to be commended uh, and to be valued and to be cherished. And although most of our political views differ, one thing we do both agree on is that we both want to leave this place better than when we entered. And I certainly think that through your work, you have achieved that over the 16 years. Um, and I congratulate you for all of your efforts. And I want to just say thank you, Senator Seward. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for your patience, your help and your support. Thank you for your kindness 
and thank you for your contribution in this chamber on behalf of your constituents and your party and all of Australia and our parliament over the years. So from whip to whip, senator to senator, person to person, I wish you all the very best in the future. Thank you. Senator Faruqi. Thank you, Mr. President. Rach, before I joined this Greens dream team in the Senate, I had heard about a Senator Seward from others who had met her. I had heard about her fierce advocacy for marginalized people and for the environment and oceans. The forced adoption inquiry is one in particular that so many people and so many women I met were so thankful to you for. But Rach, what I had heard pales in comparison with what I actually saw. Rachel is a powerhouse, a powerhouse full of heart, passion, and compassion. But she also does know how to crack the whip, figuratively, of course. Keeping us unruly mob in mind, I tell you, is no easy task. But in our party room, we are all scared of not following Rachel's instructions as a whip. And weirdly enough, I will really miss your whip crack. Rachel, you're also one of the hardest working people that I have ever come across. You must surely have a few clones running around helping you out. The depth and breadth of work that you do in the party, in parliament, in committees, with communities, seems humanly impossible, yet you do it every single day. One of the things that I've appreciated most about you, Rach, is your total no bullshit attitude. More often than not, you is inside and outside this chamber, in the party room and outside it. And this is so refreshing in a place where politicians spend so many hours honing their message that the substance often gets totally lost. I can't tell you how inspired I've been when you've just jumped on your feet and blasted the government, not just once, but again and again, for their punitive policies like the cashless debit card or their lack of support for the disadvantaged, or when you spoke out about the illegal debacle that was RoboDebt, which harmed so many people, or when you called the abolition of motions an act of political bastardry. There are countless examples, really. Um, you are never in doubt where you stand in the seaward. I cannot tell you how, many, how much I have respected your honesty and forthrightness, even when at times it may have been something I didn't want to hear. It has been an absolute privilege and an honor to work with your age over the last three years. You're such a formidable force. You stop at nothing in your fight for some of the most vulnerable people. I will sorely miss you in the Senate. I mean, 16 years is a bloody long time to serve your community and your party so diligently and with such integrity. In your first speech, Rachel, to this chamber in August 2005, you described yourself as the fourth in line of determined green women from the West. As you said, at the heart of our green value it is a vision of community a community that extends beyond the borders of a neighborhood, suburb, or state. A community in which people care about each other and the future of our planet and act carefully and responsibly to ensure its ongoing success. Well, Senator Seward, you have left no stone unturned to push for this vision to become a reality. And you have made us all so proud to be part of the Greens movement to change the world to be a better place for all. From the bottom of my heart, Rach, thank you and all the very best for this new phase in your life. We love you. Senator Thorpe. Uh, thank you, President. Well, I've uh, learned so much in, in just hearing these incredible uh, yarns about an incredible woman. Uh, I haven't been as fortunate as others in spending so much time um, working with Rachel, but I've certainly been watching 
uh, from afar for a long time and being part of the Aboriginal community across the country, I've certainly heard a lot about Rachel Stewart because the respect and admiration that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have across this country for the work, for the dedication, for the genuine commitment, the genuine time that you spent with so many blackfellas around the country, that will never be forgotten, Rachel. And I've certainly learnt a lot from you in the short time that I've been there, but I continue to hear stories from blackfellas across the country about what you did for them way back then. Uh, and the first, first time I'd ever heard um, a whole community actually speak so strongly about their love for you was the community that were fighting the Northern Territory intervention. And I was uh, inundated with calls of support at that time, but they were very clear in saying, but we got Rachel Seward in our, you know, she's got our back, she's fighting hard. And they were sending me speeches at that time and showing me uh, what an incredible um, ally we truly had working in our space, being respected in our space. But also, um, which doesn't happen very often, is that you were welcomed into our communities and you were respected and trusted by so many communities. And that in itself um, takes a very, very long time. Um, our people are so used to you know, people saying they're going to do things and that they're going to call them back and they're going to follow up. But not one person have I ever heard say to me, Rachel didn't follow up or Rachel didn't get back. It's always Rachel has done this and Rachel has done that. And, you know, they, um, they say that uh, Nick has big shoes to fill, but I also knew that I had big shoes to fill. And I'm a black woman, got, you know, going into that space and taking on the First Nations portfolio. But, you know, inside I was thinking, oh, my gosh, I've got to do justice to this space now, uh, given what you have done. And um, I just want to say on behalf of all Blackfellas across the country that have shown um, their dedication to you and uh, respect to you that... You know, we are all truly thankful for what you've done. And as previous senators have said, uh, it, it has meant that you've had to take time away from your family and away from your mum. Uh, and you've done that because it's just the incredible person that you are and you, you, you want to please everybody. And you do, you know, you still... I've been in situations with you where we're having a hard meeting and then mum calls and then you run out and you run back and you're straight back on the ball. Um, and yes, I am too one of those uh, green senators who is quite scared of you too and was always frightened of missing a vote or stuffing something up. And when I did stuff things up, I just think, oh gosh, Rachel's going to kill me. Um, but you never did. You, um, you still mentored you still provided guidance. You didn't make me feel like, you know, I was dumb. You, uh, you're just an incredible, um, an elder in my view, uh, because of your wisdom and because of um, the respect that you have from so many people. Um, that, in my eyes, is is a true eldership that um, you've shown, um, and you know, elders fight for their families and fight for their communities and fight for country. Well, that's what you do too. And you also look after people. So I want to, I want to say thank you um, for that. I also want to say um, thank you for paving the way and, and walking the talk. Uh, I think Sarah was right in, in what she said about, you know, who would have thought that a black senator was going to come into that place through the Greens and, and um, you know, be an activist at that? And it's, it's work 
like you've done over these years that has created these spaces and allowed for, for people to wake up and realise that we, knew, we need black voices in these places, in every place where uh, decisions are being made about us. And I also want to say thank you for creating the space for Dorinda Cox um, and the mentorship over years I've been told from her uh, that you've mentored her and now you know this space has been created and and another black senator's coming in I mean you know you walk the talk Rach you always have uh, someone said earlier you know there's basically no bullshit that comes from you it, you say it how it is sorry for swearing president uh, but you just you're just real and we need real people representing real people and the fight that you you fought for the cashless debit card for all of our people that have been ripped off through the through the robo debt you know you you made my heart bleed from the contributions you made because they were they were from the people's heart and they were from the people's mouths who were suffering from all of those bad decisions. So you genuinely represent the grassroots people that are fighting for a voice in that space. And I truly thank you for that. Um, and lastly, because I know there are a lot of speakers and I've, and I've only been able to work with you, not quite a year, because I haven't been there quite a year yet, but uh, how you run that place, I think you'd give the, the president a run for his money most of the time. I'm sure you, you know, eyeball one, one another every now and again over a certain parliamentary procedure that I have no idea about, but I can see it all working because you hold everyone to account uh, there also. Uh, but finally, Rach, um, you know, I, I just want to say that uh, I was really honoured to have you walk with me into the chamber that day. I'm sorry that um, I frightened you just before we walked in and said, I'm, a, I'm about to put my fist up. And you went into a panic, like, oh, my God, we haven't told the president that. And I'm like, oh, does that mean I can be kicked out? And Rachel's just explaining everything really quickly and fixed it really quickly. And uh, it was just an, an absolute honour to have you walk me into that Senate. And I'll always uh, be not just a colleague, but, I, you know, a friend. Uh, and whenever you need anything, I'd love an excuse to come over there. Uh, and, yeah, our mob love you. And thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you. I'm going to transact one item of business before I go to the next speaker. Senator Davey. I present reports of committees as shown at item 18 on today's order of business and I move that the reports be listed on the notice paper for consideration and I seek leave to incorporate tabling statements into the Hansard. I'll first put the motion. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. The contrary, no. The ayes have it. Is leave granted to incorporate the tabling statements? It is. Thank you. I'll go to Senator Firavanti wells Oh, thank you, Mr. President. And um, Rachel, um, I too wanted just to add some comments. A fitting, uh, given that um, we're of the class of 2004, and uh, I'm uh, I snuck in a bit before uh, you all uh, uh, after that 2004 election. But I just looking at the order of seniority. There's me, there's Senator Polly, there's Senator Stirl, and then there's you. So then there were three. So, um, look, I just wanted uh, just to say um, you've done a fabulous job here. I know that uh, people have mentioned about you being the whip. Even though there was a small number of you, I think that at times it looked like uh, it was a bit of an arduous task at times, but um, you were a bit like the duck, you know, paddling underneath and serene on top. Uh, look, you and I worked very, very closely together on community affairs. I served on that committee. Um, you chaired and you were involved in the, in the committee and you chaired the references committee. And I know that what a lot of people don't understand is that a lot of the work that we did on that committee was bipartisan. 
we produce some really good reports, reports that others have referred to, but we always strived on that committee to ensure that what we produced was as bipartisan as it could be, tripartisan as it could be, because we knew that that made the report stronger and that there was a greater chance that action would be taken in relation to it. Um, when I was uh, Shadow Minister for Ageing and Mental Health, uh, I know that uh, for many years, 2009 to 2013, we worked very, very closely on that committee on so many different things. And also when I was parliamentary uh, secretary to the Minister for Social Services. And I know that there are things that we've shared in common, particularly on aged care. And can I thank you um, for the work that we were able to do uh, on so many different areas, particularly in aged care. And it doesn't surprise me, Rachel, um, to know that you know now you've got your commitment with your mum. I too share that, uh, and I know what it's like um, to have aging parents and feel that need um, to be with them at this particular time. Um, can I just say I've always um, respected the passion and commitment uh, with which you have undertaken uh, the work that you've done in the belief that you were standing up for uh, your values and beliefs different to my values and beliefs at times, but um, I respected your passion that you were doing so because that was in the best interests of the people that you were representing. And uh, can I wish you all the very, very best to you and to your family. I know that you are not retiring uh, from public life. I'm sure that you will continue in your inimitable way uh, to ensure that your voice uh, is uh, heard. Um, can I congratulate you for your many years of service uh, to the Senate and wish you and your family all the very, very best uh, in the next phase of your life? Senator Pratt. Rachel, uh you are a woman of great conscience, discipline and influence, and it's been an honour to work with you in this place. The, your in-depth knowledge of the Social Security Act is something I can aspire to, but mostly uh, that's come from the way you've listened to people and their experiences. And I want to really acknowledge how you've been a good conscience in this place to call people out. Um, I hold you in the same esteem as I do my good friend Giz Watson, and uh, it's a great. <laughs> that's uh, by creating a parallel with her for your influence and friendship. That is the best way, in as short a words as possible, as I can indicate the esteem uh, with which I hold you and your contribution. Um, and so with that, I wish you all the best, and I know that you will continue to influence decisions in this place, just as um, the likes of uh, Joe Valentine, Dee Maggetts and Christabel Chamaret. Thank you. Senator Colbert. Thank you, Mr President. Um, and I know I would very much like to associate myself with the comments of so many across the chamber, not necessarily in respect of all the philosophy, but uh, to pay tribute to you, Senator Seward, um, Rach, um, for the work that you've done. Like so many others, we've crossed paths on and around community affairs on the same side of the table at times, but also on opposite sides. Um, one of the scarier moments for me, uh, I have to say, was the number of times we were asking almost the identical question. Now, I'm not sure whether it was from the same perspective or not, but it usually was, uh, because what, what we were both trying to achieve, and I think it's a hallmark of uh, your service to the parliament and to the Australian people, we're always looking to achieve the same thing, and that's to make things better for people. Now, we might not always have had the same solution. But we were certainly looking to achieve that, and I, and I have to say that's something that I very much appreciate um, from you in the context of our dealings um, through portfolio work that I'm doing now, and the things that I know that you're passionate about. The fact that I could sit down with you, we could work through something, um, we could come to a solution, uh, and the fact that you have been able to get so many things done, which has been something that's been reflected on. Uh, during so many speeches tonight is the way that you have gone about your business here in this place. 
and I know that that's very much appreciated by people across the chamber. Um, very much in the context of respect, trust and integrity, and those are really, I think, important values um, that you bring here. I know that I could sit down and work through a, progress, a process with you and then that could be seen to fruition. Um, colleagues always have listened to you, perhaps not so much when you were shouting at us, but the reality is that you actually didn't need to because you had built that respect, you had built that trust, you had built that um, integrity with people so that, um, so that you didn't have to shout at us because, as has been said so many times, you, we knew you were across your stuff. You knew that you were looking for a genuine solution. So, and, and I wasn't aware of the, the fact, and it is in the context of the operation of the parliament, the fact that there's one of 30 pieces of legislation that are private senators' bills in the history of this place that have been passed through both houses of parliament. Um, is one of those things that you can take with you as a person who's served in this place um, as, a, as a, a point of moment, because there are obviously so very few of them. It's a demonstration of the respect that you've earned. Uh, it's been expressed by so many here, uh, and that you now go on to play an important role in a family sense, and that's part of your decision making. I understand very much from our private conversations that we've had. Um, and I wish you all the very, very best for that. Uh, and, and thank you for the collegiate nature under which you've uh, interacted with all of us in the chamber. Uh, all the very best for the family things, but also whatever else it is. And, and congratulations uh, on the service that you provided to this place, but also to Australia as part of what you've come here to do, which is to make things better for people, and you're certainly are one of the people who's actually achieved a lot of that. Congratulations. Senator Patrick. Thank you very much, Mr President. Look, Rachel, I'll be very, very short. I actually don't have a perfect relationship with you. I've spent lots and lots of time talking to you, and the reason I don't have a personal relationship is because you're always working. You are a machine. I, I say that with an engineering background. It's, it's a compliment. <laughs> I'll be running on renewable energy. Um, look, the Senate will be a worse place for you. I just want to say one last thing. Uh, back in the moment, uh, you were in a committee room asking for a document that uh, Services Australia claimed was uh, cabinet in confidence. The matter made it to the AAT, and the moment I get that document, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be giving you a phone call. Thank you. Um, I'll bring the statements to a conclusion myself, if I may. Um, being a senator from Western Australia and other parts it poses unique challenges. Um, the distances travelled, the time spent away from home uh, are so much greater than those of us um, who um, happen to reside closer to Canberra. Um, a number of senators and yourself, Senator C, would have commented upon the unique burdens and appreciation of your family uh, and the challenges you have faced. And um, those of us who have you've spoken to about it, particularly acknowledge that. Um, the, the burdens of serving from Western Australia, particularly with your work, workload over such a period, are quite extraordinary. Um, I would like to associate myself with other colleagues' statements, um, but particularly make some observations from my role as president. Um, through all my time here, you have had a unique standing amongst the stakeholders with whom you have worked. Uh, as Senator Birmingham outlined, your passion reflected your genuine concern at those often lacking a voice or feeling like they lacked a voice or lacking someone that spoke for them in this place that you sought to represent. But as president, I'd like to acknowledge your role and contribution in making this place work. Um, a couple of people have commented that whips have a reputation outside this place that doesn't reflect all their work, um, as well as being disciplinarians, as your colleagues have so graciously outlined. Um, the whips really do so much to facilitate the operation of the Senate. And we must remember it is the Senate that effectively decides the passage of legislation in this country. It is a hard, not fairly acknowledged role, but it is utterly integral to the role and the work we do here. Not only are you, as I understand, the longest serving whip in the building, um, I understand also the longest serving committee chair in the building, uh, in this place or the other place. 
you have been an absolutely critical cog in the machinery of the Senate and therefore the entire parliament. Others have rightly acknowledged your enormous contribution and your work in social, community and health policy. But as president, I'd like to acknowledge your critical work in making parliament work and offer my personal thanks for the work and all the efforts you've done to assist me in my role. You have always been honest, clear, trustworthy and committed to ensuring all senators can be their best and seek to strive the people as much as they can. Congratulations, Senator Seward. It being near no other contributions, um, we have one adjournment speech, so I'll propose that the Senate do now adjourn and call Senator Patrick.